filmmaker, George Lucas. For what? For doing a good job uh, producing the show. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Rick. And now we're really, I think, really not in the regular show. I think now we're, we're definitely in the, uh, the after show. If it doesn't end in the next 30 seconds, I can see it going for hours. Okay. Now now that we're in the after show, and oh boy, does it feel good to be in the after. Oh boy, does it feel oh good. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Right before we went live. Yeah. I gave Bryson an assignment. I said, I'm going to introduce a new segment this week. I want you to make a bumper. I'm giving you creative free reign to come up with what the bumper is. You have 90 minutes while we're doing the main show yeah. to come up with this bumper. And I hope it's ready now. Why I'm not? going to throw to it and I'm going to hope that it's ready. Yeah! I want to make something very clear. That is yeah. a sound alike. I did not record new audio for the bump. Okay, let's open up the bumper factory. Right? We should open the bumper factory. Let's open it. I got, hang on, I gotta find the... There's... Oh, boy. Uh, excuse me, are you at work, Bryson? I am. Are you going to ask me where my helmet is? Yeah. yeah. It feels unsafe to be working at the factory without protective headgear. Listen, uh, I haven't had my helmet with me in, like, months. That doesn't mean well, you... you what, what kind of excuse is that? I'd like to bring up another point, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, George? And this is in the area of precedent. Because there's a lot of talk this week about uh, impeaching uh, our terrible president. And uh, one of the big factors uh, is you want to set a precedent that no future executive leader uh, can do uh, yeah. such unconstitutional and criminal things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So precedent, you agree precedent's important, right, Bryson? Yeah. So what I'll ask you to uh, make that bumper, huh? Mm -hmm. And you did it. Yeah, and then and we can, and then we opened up the bumper factory. Mm -hmm. I can see what you're getting at, George. I it's it would be sort of hypocritical of you to say that it's not allowed to ask for a bumper before the show because I believe that you've done that in the past as well. It's I'm just like saying, and I want it to be made clear that it looks right. like the old chestnut that you like to pull out when you don't feel that, well, the bumper factory isn't open yet. But it turns out you can make a bumper anytime you please. <laughs> I guess you're right, George. And I guess I guess you're also, I'm so glad that you guys brought this to my attention. It was an oversight on my part. Without my helmet, you're absolutely right. It's it's completely unsafe for me to be making bumpers. No, no, no. no. You've you you done a great no. job. You've you shown that job, it's fine. Shown you shown that it's fine. you didn't need it in the first place. Oh. Yes, you actually set the most dangerous precedents in the world for yourself. <laughs> You've shown that you can make a bumper at any time, helmet or no. But we can all agree that the bumper factory is most certainly closed after dark. We can all agree on that. I don't feel it isn't. Can we? I think all rules are out. I'd love, I'd love, no. George, I'd do love you know, to get, get, get a bumper that says no more rules. I wonder if we can do this, <laughs> George. Hang on one second. George, what if I um, do? We need the bumper factory is closed bumper anymore. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> and and Bryson, I'm going to add something Patrick, to the list. This is a mistake, Patrick. I'm telling you right now. I would. I'm only I'm only taking it off screen because it's gone, Patrick. Dude. There is listen, yeah, Patrick Doxmore. Just you Patrick's are, password over and over. Patrick again. Doxmore. Patrick Dogsmore, there is sensitive information that you just shared. Yeah, I saw it. 
Yeah. Everybody saw it, Patrick. That's I not a surprise. I put it on there on purpose. <laughs> hey, if you love the the new the new reality in which Bryson can make a bumper anytime, any place. Yeah. Write in the comments. We love you, Bryson. We You're love you, Bryson. We love you, Bryson. Bryson, I, we honestly, love you. Yes, we do. I just want to. I just want to say. I don't mm -hmm. think we're all talking about the same thing that Patrick just doxed. I think Patrick doxed multiple things. I think so too. There did. seems to be a lot of confusion about how much. Yeah. He doxed no, him. I know what I doxed. I'll tell you what I doxed. I doxed. Well, um, he's doubling down on the docs. No, I doxed the website. I doxed the URL. I think you might have done a double dox, my friend. Okay. What else did I dox? Dox Vader over here. Bryson. Bryson. Can I add two more bumpers to the list? Yeah. yeah. Take out that... Uh, you, that uh, you promised oh, me you yeah. weren't going to. Okay, yes. Right. I don't think I dox anything else. I want you to do a new bumper that is the bumper factory is closed, bumper is deleted. <laughs> mm -hmm. To commemorate the fact that we no longer have access to the bumper factory is closed bumper anytime we might need to use it it's just a contingency plan we better save this okay. also i'd like some i'd like some uh, fan art uh for the movie poster uh i, I want it to be a, a, a movie a, a theatrical movie poster for welcome home doxy carmichael and it's patrick <laughs> on the one owner rider okay and That's i want to say art, not a bumper I will actually, I, I have the bad bump. news Hang for you, on. Bryson. I have the bad news for you. I said I wanted two bumpers, and that is the exact bumper that I was going to ask for. Bryson, can I, can I get Welcome Home Docs Co. Jenkins? No. Watto, can, also... Can, can I get Docs Hollywood? <laughs> Docs. I'll write down Docs Hollywood. Uh, let, let's get some Star Wars stuff in here, because I don't think... Uh, people love Star Wars stuff. Oh, but someone's saying Hollywood. a night at the Boxberry. Ooh, that's great. Uh, hey, George, wait, George Watto, Bryson, I'm going to take you off for a second. We're going to do something. Mm -hmm. And then you got to put it in the bumper, okay? Ready? One, two, three. I got to say, I have even more respect for Pharaoh and Katan after doing that. Really that hurt. Oh, it really hurt. Yeah. It it's really hurt. And Carrie, and Carrie, whenever yeah. Carrie joined in, and he yeah. really, he really took it to another level. Yeah. Uh, Bryson, now that we have a couple bumpers on the list, and you know what's ahead of you, I'd like to do a round of notes on Dewato's mailbag bumper. I yeah. have some. Too. Yeah. First of all, I would love to clear the record if we could, and I would love to get you just saying real clean into the mic uh, that that is not a sound alike. That you're saying that's pulled audio. That's pulled audio. <laughs> From where? From, From your warm up where? for the Joel Kim Booster Eliza Skinner episode. Wow. Fair enough. I I sounded like a sound alike. <laughs> okay so here's what i want to say i want to lay out a clean track of new audio for the watto's mailbag bump okay yeah it is going mm -hmm. to necessitate the bumper this being is a so little much bit harder to do what, no, what i'm doing right now no it's not have bryson here's how you do it you have someone make a little clip on twitch and then you go and download that no, clip it's not bryson, that hard bryson bryson right, i have my only here in the show Bryson, I have my phone here. I'm going to on the air record the audio. This makes it easier, Wado. This on... makes it so much yes! easier. Yes, I'm collaborative. Wado, should we mute you yes. so it's a surprise when it comes on? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, we uh, be... I also I want uh, fan art of Star Wars Episode Two: A Dox of the Kotnar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also, this isn't really a direct play on anything, but um, what's that movie, Finding Forster? Yeah, you're the docs now, caught. <laughs> yeah, um, I would like I, I would like it to be um, 
I would like you to put it in and have. I don't know why I want this specifically, but I want some fan art for something called Doxing Dooku, and it's Patrick Doxing Count Dooku. Wow. And have him say, "You're the man now, Dox." That's good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we. I have. So, there's someone in the uh, waiting room. I'm gonna bring them on. I yeah. genuinely. Don't know. Can I leave is. for this? Yeah, bye. Can Hang I on, wait, Bryson. Bryson, <laughs> Bryson, you can't leave yet. Hang on one second, Bryson. Okay, yeah. yes. No, because I, I have some other one. I, Hang on I one other. second, Bryson. Where is this? Hang on one second, Bryson. I don't know where your dear bye bye Bryson is. Wait, I have another We're note for Bryson. We're actually bye bye Bryson. <laughs> Bring Stop. Bryson back in here. Bring Bryson back in here. I have an yeah, bring him back in. I'm I yeah, we were supposed to do a round of notes. Wait, Bryson, did you make dinner in the time that Patrick <laughs> booted you? I took, a, I, I took a spaghetti break. Can we get a bumper for that? Spaghetti yeah, break? For spaghetti. spaghetti break? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. And maybe and make, it feel like, make, it make it feel like an homage to Fox's prison break series. Okay. Yeah. But but also maybe to make it a little bit funnier, you mispronounce spaghetti like a little kid, like you call it like a scabetti yeah. break or something. And and in, in prison of. break, uh, the premise was that he had the map of the prison tattooed on him. Hang on, George. Imagery, but it said spaghetti instead of the map of the oh, prison. I think frozen on my end. Yeah. Right. No, George is coming through. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick, you're the bread. one who's frozen. Madonna always says you're frozen when your heart's not open. Uh, Watto, I was just gonna. Say say uh uh i'm dyslexic so spaghetti is probably already going to be misspelled on my post-it perfect now bryson can i give you a final note on the mailbag bump? oh and for people who are complaining about the me spoiling prison break it's the reveal at the end of the pilot you had plenty of time one could argue too much time bryson as i said the audio file which i have just texted to you is longer it's going to necessitate extended a uh, video uh, accompanying the bumper okay but mm. i gave you open reign by the way who is this guy in the upper corner here uh, uh queen elsa because he's frozen <laughs> that was good water is he olaf the snowman because he's frozen oh now he's gone okay. he went away who is he Rosamund Pike in a David Fincher film? Because he's gone, girl. Okay, Bryson, serious note. In, I, I, I gave you a lot of creative free reign on this one. I just gave you the name of the segment, and I said, make it whatever you want. But the name of this segment is Watto's Mailbag. Mm -hmm. What is the graphic that you put in this <laughs> one? It's... <laughs> It's a mailbox. It's a mailbox. Oh, oh. I looked for I looked for a bag for so long, and George, you can't even see the bumpers. I did see it. I did see you it. Saw you saw this fool. one. I did see that so, one. You fool! It is a mailbox. That's why I started laughing before he asked it. Go back, pull that clip, and show that I started laughing before he revealed it because I did see that bumper. You were counting on me not seeing the bumper because I usually don't. So you got sloppy. Helmet off. In a in a factory that's supposed to be closed, and you're making them a, a mailbag bumper with a mailbox on it. Yes, I looked for Look. so many mailbag. I looked for so yes. many mailbag videos. I, I'm so you know what? I'm so glad that I've never said this before because you do great work on the show, Bryson. So let me preface this by saying you do great work, and we appreciate all the work you do. But I am so you're glad. Right that you weren't working on Bob Zemeckis' Oscar-winning film, Forrest Gump. Because on the day in which Forrest is supposed to show up on set, sitting on that bench with a box of chocolates, I bet you would have just had him sitting there with a big old sloppy bag because you don't think there's a difference. <laughs> and they would have lost a full day of shooting. Where's the bag for Forrest Gump? Where's the box? Oh, no, what do you mean, Bryson? Why'd you say bag? Oh, it's the same thing. I looked for a box for so long, Mr. Zemeckis. All I could find was this big sloppy bag. There's a difference between a box and a bag. Life is I, like a bag of chocolates. It's big and sloppy. Go. You reach your hand down in it. I find what you can. Find a big sloppy bag. I just sent you. I just texted you a picture of a USPS mailbag. 
I want you to put Watto's head coming out of the bag and use the audio clip I already sent to you. I thought you could do these on your own. I didn't want to burden you with too much direction, but it turns out I need to hold your hand through every step of the goddamn process. Bryson, I'd like a bumper. I'd like a bumper for, uh, ooh, cat's out of the bag, and it's a cat emerging from a box. Yeah, we do need that bumper, though. Great. That's a big one. You, you, you're going to try to spoof this show in the in the previously ons? You're going to try to spoof us and have some razzits, have some fun? Well, let me tell you something. These bumpers are going to start spoofing you, Bryson. You're going to have to make spoofs on yourself in the bumper factory. Oh, look who's that. I know how to, to razz and jazz. Oh, I'm chilly. The oh, ice man coming. Mr. Freeze, ice to meet you. I understand I what on how we were clowning on Bryson and now Patrick's back and order is restored and we can clown on Patrick. Thank God. Can I say, I understand what it's like for people who say there's too much going on in this show. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you leave for 15 minutes and then you're like, I don't know what's happening. I'm special editioning Watto's mailbag. Great. And I'm making uh what are we bumping to the top, George? Oh, that's a great idea for that's a great idea for a bumper, but instead of what of it's Watto. Watto we bump into the top. The point the point is you need to do a special edition on that one, which is Watto we bump into the top and have Watto in a top hat and tails. <laughs> I want Watto decked out to the nine. Okay. I just wanna I just wanna do a quick check-in on anybody that's watching the show for the first time. Hope you're having a good time. I'm oh, Bryson. Yeah, welcome. The Bumper is Factory great... is off to work. All right. And we designed this show. This episode is specially designed as a point of entry episode for people who've missed the first <laughs> 250 hours of the George Lucas talk show. This is a, a hard point. We're doing a hard reboot starting right now. My name is George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Here's my friend Waddle. Here's my friend Patrick. There's Bryson. He works bye, in a factory. Bye, Bryson. No helmet. It's tough sometimes for uh, to play bumpers because George doesn't know that they're playing. That I, was, that was really by my early. Bryson. Yeah. Yes, that was very. You've already missed time. that I'm seeing the bumpers. Yeah, George Patrick, you froze bumpers. and went away. I can see the bumpers, Patrick. I can see the bumpers. How did I miss this much? Much you like our for like friend 20 minutes. Joel Osmond can see dead people. George can see bumpers. Wait, George, can we hear you say it like our friend? I see bumpers. That's great. That's okay, also what happens. Listen. That's also what happens when Patrick gets near an automobile. I see bumpers because <laughs> he's so cold. He freezes them. Let's get Bryson back in here. Oh, man. Bryson, I'm sorry. We just, we're going to need to reset the show in a moment with a clean entry point because Patrick was a little bumper happy. But I want to put one more bumper on the list before we make this a very accessible, clean entry yeah. point for new listeners. Yeah. I got, got, got the pad. What do you need? We need the uh, uh, IC bumpers. Bumper. That is a parody of the Sixth Sense. Quick clarifying question, Watto. Is it IC bumpers or is it IC bumpers? Okay, we actually need two bumpers now. <laughs> One bumper is IC bumper. George is in a blanket. Like Haley Blodman in the Sixth Sense. You can see his breath because it gets cold when ghosts are around. And we use the audio clip of George saying, I see bumpers. The second bumper is for when the bumpers are not really heating up the way they usually do. The bumpers are, are laying a little bit cold. And that one is icy bumpers. And if you see a car and then the bumper on the car is all icy and it falls off and shatters. Okay. Can you also put in pictures of every guest we've ever had looking bored? No. Um, what? What? What is? What is the order that I'm making these bumpers in? I'm definitely dealer's special choice. Editioning. Dealer's choice, Bryson. Oh, dealer's choice. Thank you, George. But but yeah. mailbag is number also, one. Mailbag yeah. is number one from that point forward. Dealer's choice. Yeah. 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 
Uh, also, Bryson, mm -hmm. a bumper, and this is a bumper. Uh, this is a bumper for if we ever need to stall for time. Mm -hmm. So this will be like, you can work on the, you can take however long you want to do this. I don't care if this takes 30 years to do this bumper. Yeah, one of these. Um, if you, if we ever say we're going to need some time, you cut to this bumper and this is, we'll only use this for emergencies yeah. and it's all that, you know, remember we asked everybody to say McClunky in the holiday special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just all of those edited back to back. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So this is the, this is Wait. the, uh, a stretch for time McClunky bumper. George, can yeah. I also say someone yeah. did make a super cut of everyone saying them. But it they was did just a great the job. Audio. They did a great job, but it was just the audio. And I want to know if they did do a cut of the videos too, because it would be great yeah. to see just the videos. Because they did it where the audio was over the original footage of the McClunky scene in episode yeah. four. And yeah. it's a great watch. I highly recommend it on YouTube. I'd love to see uh, it. And the channel, I think, just exists for that one clip. It's a it's a channel, I think, called McClunky. Yeah. Can we let Bryson uh, go so he can go work? Yeah, no, Bryson. I have one more bumper I need oh, wait, to one more thing. Room. Yeah, and then after Bryson is gone, this time we really need to make the after throw a clean entry point for new viewers. Yeah. So Bryson, mm -hmm. can I request one final bumper? Uh, well, uh, we already have the last bumper ever as a bumper on the list. I don't mean the last bumper we're ever going to need. I mean the last bumper I'm going to request in this run of me requesting bumper. Yeah. Stoling for time, and it's a bumper because Patrick has really been stepping up his game on guest booking. But sometimes with bigger guests, it's like, oh, it's 7.59 p.m. Eastern time, and the guest still hasn't showed up backstage. We don't know if they're here yet. And we might at some point book beloved character actor Corey Stoll, perhaps best known for playing villainous Yellow Jacket in the Ant-Man film. And who knows if he'll be able to make it on time. So we need a stolen for time bumper in mm -hmm. case Stoll is booked, but we're trying to stretch it out, giving yeah. him time to get his, his tech set up. Okay. Yeah. I got that. Bye bye, Bryson. <laughs> okay. Clean entry. Patrick, did you uh, did you miss our Forrest Gump run? Hmm. Did you miss that, I'll, Patrick? I'll catch it. I'll, yeah, I'll catch it on the rerun. Great. Um, do you know what I was drinking before? Uh, were you drinking your stop and shop soda? Double fudge? Nope. Polar? Polar. Diet grape. Oh, diet grape. Diet grape. George told diet me about grape. a double fudge soda that he got recently. I oh, recently boy. got a, a a brand of soda called uh, Diet Double Fudge. <laughs> Which, please you explain better, to them. Bro. You better watch yourself because Geth and Finelli are going to come in here pissed off. You're stepping yeah. on their turf here, George. But Wano, I want you to hear what the deal was with this Double Fudge soda. George, okay. can okay, you the Diet Double Fudge? Yeah, already a fascinating. The, the The name itself seems to tell a story. A Diet Fudge soda. But then they doubled the fudge, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually—I—I I, I was gonna—I tried out. I didn't have high expectations for it, but it actually tastes kind of like a soda version of the chocolate Tootsie Roll Pop flavor. It's that kind of chocolate flavor. It's not bad. It, uh, I drank the whole bottle. But here's the fascinating thing: there's three servings in a bottle. It's—it's it's this size bottle. It is um, how many ounces is this? It's a liter. It's a one liter. It's one liter bottle. Uh, per serving, it's zero calories. But if you drink the whole bottle, it's 10. <laughs> it's 10, Wada. Uh, so if you drink a third of it, zero calories. Drink another serving, that's zero calories. Drink another serving of it as three separate servings. That should be zero, zero, zero. But if you drink the whole bottle... 10 calories. Now, I am no mathematician, but that does not seem to add up to me. Yeah. Oh. Also, tri Triple Zero is the name of a very popular droid character in the ongoing Marvel Star Wars comic book series. Dr. Afra. Right. 
And I will yeah, admit, yeah. as we as we start to unpack it as a storyteller, uh, I understand that because what you're talking about essentially is a trilogy. Yeah. And if you just watch one chapter of the trilogy, you'll get nothing from it. You'll get nothing out of it. Zero. Yeah. Zero, zero. Zero. But if you watch them all three, you think, oh, oh. I'm full. Oh. I'm full now. I'm full now. Ten calories. I'm full now. I'm full calories. now. I'm full now. Ten Watto, calories. Watto, Watto, are we course, waiting? What? what? Are we waiting for Watto's mailbag once the bumper is done? Yeah, I'm not going to do it until the bumper is accurate. Maybe it's an after show segment. It'll happen when it needs to happen. Great. I just yeah. wanted to clear Look, it up. I, so I, I understand that I wound up and people were ready for the segment, but that bumper was so misleading. There were rumors about the wrong with it, Patrick. There were there were rumors about the sound alike that yeah. needed to be settled. A new audio track needed to be laid down. And also he used the graphic of a fucking mailbox. The only direction I gave him was that this segment yeah. was called mailbag. Exactly. Throw it over your phone. I don't know what you imagine. Is. And then you walk like a Muppet off. I get it. I'm so glad. I I, I love Bryson to death. I think he's a, a real pro and a, a quality human being. He's but a friend. I'm I'm so glad that he didn't work on David Fincher's uh, feature film Seven. That yeah. at the when the when they go out there to have a package delivered from a mysterious van out in the middle of nowhere, and that guy he just pulls out of the back of the van a big sloppy bag. Yeah. Cut. What do you mean cut? It's supposed to be a box. Well, I, I tried so hard. I, I couldn't find a box. I thought a bag and a box are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've lost a day. We've yeah. lost a day because because Bryson doesn't think there's a difference between a bag and the box. I, I heard that he originally was in charge of the prop department on Richard Kelly's thriller, The Box. And he got fired right. on the first day right. because it was just causing massive continuity. That and that's the reason that film notoriously did not do very well is because yeah. it was a troubled production from day one. They brought it. They got he he filled up the the prop room with bags. I remember yeah. liking that movie though. Yeah, it's a good film. It's fun. Yeah, it's all re it's all reshoots. It's all yeah. reshoots because of, thanks to Bryce. Sometimes and that's okay, George. Sometimes oh, here's the thing, George. You know this. Waddle knows this. I Sometimes, most of the time, movies need reshoots. And that's yeah. okay. But, it's not a bad but not thing. For, but not for such a stupid reason. Yes. Yeah. No. It was unavoidable. For a dumb reason. I mean, and it's a reason why Netflix has had so much success recently with their original films. Because they kept Bryson so far away from Bird Box. They uh -huh. just knew he had the potential to sabotage that thing entirely. Uh-huh. I'm, yeah, I'm seeing some fan art coming in. <laughs> Want to show off, Sarah Clubs? Sarah Clubs. Very good. Uh, there's some more. Where's this one? Where's this Bryson one? is now. I'm sorry. Bryson is defending himself in the private chat, saying it was a good mailbox. Doesn't fucking matter, man. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the damage that Bryson could have done to Rocky <laughs> if instead of being a boxer, <laughs> he works in a grocery store <laughs> helping a cashier? Bryson, what what's this location you've booked? It's supposed to be the gym where he's training. Oh well, I I tried to find a, a gym. Uh, where he's training, but then I thought maybe it would be the same if he was just working in a grocery store. Bryson, you've cost us millions of dollars. We're not going to make our day now. There's nothing mm -hmm. we can... That's the reason why at one point you see him punching those frozen sides of... Uh, I'm just going to say that it happened. That's the reason why you see him punching those frozen sides of beef is because little baby Bryson, little baby Bryson in the mid-1970s, Little baby Bryson up. in the mid 1970s. I mean, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't want up. to drag Bryson, but uh, there's a reason he moved to the live streaming business because yeah. it's very clear, as we've made it, that he had a, a very detrimental effect on major Hollywood films for over 40 years. And I want to get some. Example, I want to get some fan art out there. Let's get some fan art. I want the movie poster for Welcome Home, Boxy Carmichael. 
and it's Bryson in a bag. Yes. George, it's funny you bring up the Rocky story, of course, where he turned Rocky into a bagger, right? And it was a major issue. Uh, there's, there's ironically a story that is almost the exact flip side of this, okay? In the late 90s, early 2000s, Bryson, and people don't know this because this kind of work often happens secretly. Bryson, I, I don't think I've ever seen you laugh this hard, George. Bryson was working as Will Smith's acting coach. And Will has a very unique process where he really trusts his collaborators. Uh -huh. And he gave Bryson a lot of power at that time. And he wasn't even reading the scripts. He would say, Bryson, you read them. You tell me what to do. I'll just infer from you what I need to do to prepare for the role. And Will Smith trained as a boxer for months and months and months, over a year for this film that he thought was going to be a major prestige pay play for him, potentially his first Oscar nomination. And he showed up on set already gloves laced up with the boots and the trunks ready to box. And Robert Redford looked him square in the eyes and said, Will Smith, what have you done? This movie is called The Legend of Bagger Vance. And the damage that was caused, I mean, that's the reason Will Smith made Ali next. Because he said, well, what about all this time I spent learning boxing? I got to apply that somewhere. Apparently this movie is called Bagger Vance. This motherfucker told me it was called Boxer Vance. Hey, Bryson. What have you done? What? What? Watto. Watto, you better find out who it is. You better ask them to put in the private chat how they want to be introduced. That's right. And it, Oh, boy. They better know that it can be serious or it can be a joke, however they want it. They better know. What else should they know? They should know that things are crazy tonight. Oh. They should know that whatever they type in, Watto will read verbatim. Yes, yes. We want to hear from them how they want to be introduced. We're letting them be creative in this moment. I'm watching their face as they type. <laughs> oh, boy. How's this? How's the, uh, do they look concerned? Do no, they, they look, look like they're, they're really thinking. They're thinking of a good thing, and I see them typing. I see them typing away. Oh, boy, who could it be? Who could oh, it be? I don't know. It's a complete mystery to me, but <laughs> let me just say this. Folks, <laughs> Grogu's and Gragras, he was cut from Ghostbusters, he was fired from SNL, and he sweats a lot. John Milheiser! Hi. There he is. Hi, John. How are Hello. you? Good. How are Hello, you? John. Hello, John. Hi. Hello, John. Thank you for having me as a special guest. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. How's now, your night I noticed. Going? What's it? What? How's your night going? Uh, this is my night. I <laughs> was prepping for this all day. Yeah. Um, I scheduled my whole day around it, and then yeah. I showered. And I put on a collar shirt and sweater for this event. Yeah, yeah. Are you wearing now? Here's the question because I've done that before too. Does your does your pants match what your shirt is, or is it like pajama well, pants? Well, it is pajama pants. That's good. That's yeah. good. All right, okay. all right. That's the move. That's the, move. the quarantine style. <laughs> yes. yes. And and what is the 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 cloth that is sort of draped elegantly behind you? Okay, so I didn't want to draw too much attention to the furniture. I'm quarantining in a part of the house. And uh, so it's not my stuff. It's mm -hmm. my roommate, Nicole's. Sure. So it's a big tiger couch. <laughs> wow. You gotta leave that. You gotta um, leave that. That's good. John, you, you are now 2021's candidate for new Tiger King. <laughs> wow. New Tiger King. Oh boy. John, I, I wow. love the energy it's bringing. Yeah. But I, I was going to compliment the draping before it felt like you were in a gallery. Yeah, like an art studio. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got you've you've already shown two uh, looks, and they're and they're both great. Thank in you. In terms of the art direction. 
Should I? Now, are you in? Or now, I, what is this room that you're in? Leave the tiger. Leave the tiger. I, we love the tiger. Now, um, what's this? It's just a, an extra room. Yeah, room. Oh, I know that feeling. I got so many extra rooms around this place. <laughs> hey, John, do you mind if I ask? Yes. We try to avoid gotcha journalism here on this show, but sometimes there are questions that must be asked. Okay. Who did you play in your deleted role in Ghostbusters Answer the Call? So, ooh, you know the full name. Uh... <laughs> I play, I, you can still see me in the movie, um, but it's when Kristen Wiig is getting out of the taxi to go into the shitty university school that Melissa McCarthy teaches at. And I'm a punk uh, science student getting in a fight, being like, those, those isotopes were unstable and fighting with another nerd. So you can still see us fighting, but she just walks past us. Did, did he have a name? Yes, and I don't remember it. So, I mean, and I'm, in the, I'm, in the, I'm one of the first names in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You uh, know, yeah. yeah, it says Higgins student on IMDb. And I okay. feel like now's the time if you want to give him a name, I feel like we could give him a name. Mark, Mark Higgins. Mark? Oh, wow. No, oh, Higgins so student. Mark, his name's Mark. His name's Mark. His name's Mark. And did, did he have a major? <laughs> uh, chemistry. The isotopes, yeah. Watto. The isotopes. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I just want to confirm. Yeah. I know, Watto. <laughs> George, what are you doing? I'm just, uh, I was just doing research to see if I could find if anyone else had given this character a name in fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cruising the uh, Ghostbusters answer the call fanfic sites. John, am I wrong? Are you, are you a George fan? Am I making oh, that up? Big George. It's an honor to be here. I'm big George Lucas. That's what fan. I thought. That's what I thought. What is your what's your favorite Star Wars movie? So I thought about this in the shower. The shower yeah. I took right before I started this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. congratulations. The prep, the prep shower. I, yeah. Um I I mean, so so I like I obviously like the uh, Return of the Jedi, but I do give lots of prop uh, props and I really do like Rogue One. I think that's a really good movie. Yeah. And okay. I, yeah. I, I, I'm a bit of a, I have a bit of a controversy. I, I kind of liked Solo a little bit. So I think there's hey. something Solo that it introduced me to that, um, uh, what's his name is still alive, uh, Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that got me into the uh, animated series a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. The Darth Maul stuff and the animated stuff is fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad that you're back on that. Uh, do you know about George's museum, John? Uh, is it in uh, Skywalker Ranch? Yeah, no. George. Well, because I think John would like this. I, oh, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna be pretty excited when you find out uh, that it's in Los Angeles. Hasn't opened yet. Um, we're building it. Let's. We'll get a picture up of uh, conceptual art yeah. for it. But it's the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. We tried opening it in. San Francisco and Chicago. Um, San Francisco didn't want it. They fought me hard on it. I thought I want to. I want to pay for a big billion dollar museum that looks like a spaceship and it's full with all my cool posters and stuff, and my art collection. Mm -hmm. And then we tried to do it in uh, Chicago. That's what it's going to look like. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty good stuff. What do and you think, Chicago, it, John? What do you think it looks like before we get any farther? When you see this, what do you what do you think it looks like? It looks like uh, Wally's girlfriend, <laughs> Eva. Sure, Eva. Eva. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a new one. Yeah. Uh, keep going, George. Sorry. And and uh, but now it's gonna uh, you know obviously we've been delayed a little by the pandemic, but uh, you're gonna be able to go every day if you want to the Lucas Museum of Narrative. It's all about art that tells stories. Gonna have a bunch of Norman Rockwell paintings. Gonna have uh, yeah. Charles Schultz stuff. We'll put up, uh, of course, of course, we're going to put up some Star Wars art. We'll have like some conceptual, like I know where the, the, I think we, I don't, let me check the website and see, but for a while, the, I said, make the, the introductory image on the website when you go into the, because if you go to Lucas Museum website, um, for a while there, the introductory thing you would see was some conceptual art of uh, Gungan City. 
Mm -hmm. Just to get a little taste. Some of this is going to be, uh, you know, the stuff that people really want to see. Um, but you're going to, do you like museums generally, John? I do like museums. I like, I try to go to a few whenever I'm in a city. Yeah. Yeah. But there's um, some good ones in LA too. Yeah. Uh, um, yes, there is. Yeah. Um, yeah. George is big into Norman Rockwell. I saw that piqued your interest and I feel, George, we should uh, tell, tell yeah. John about your Norman Rockwell collection. Well, well, I wait, think, it looks well, like John was about to say something before we load him with our Norman Rockwell information. What's your opinion on Norman Rockwell? Because I'm sure looking at the new auto. Um, I have Norman Rockwell hanging in my bedroom, but I can't show you. But uh, I just like two Norman Rockwells. And then I've been to the Norman Rockwell Museum in uh, Vermont. Yeah. Um, because he lived there and that's where he was based out of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what are the two that you have? What are the two that you have? Uh... It's a guy in a rowboat with an umbrella, kicking back, eating snacks. Very cute. <laughs> and then another one, because I paint and draw, another one is of a little kid painting on a canvas and then like the teachers behind him being like, that's pretty good. <laughs> is and it they tell so stories, get... like, like, is it this guy? Is it this guy? Yes. <laughs> there he is. Look at him. Look at that guy kicking back. That looks like a great day. That looks so, like Patrick in about 15 years. <laughs> I want to get this straight, John. You're saying that you love fine art. Mm -hmm. And the two Rockwells you have on your wall are a child having fun, <laughs> making some art, and a, a man eating a snack. On a boat, he's having a full day fishing, so. I'm just saying there are a couple pieces here that make me think you're going to be very happy with what we're about to explain to you. Okay. Well, me and my buddy Steve um, were two of the biggest Norman Rockwell collectors on the planet. Huh. Um, we even, there's a book that you can, if you like it, there's a book for, of Norman Rockwell telling stories from the collections of George Lucas. And Steven Spielberg, and it's just this was a basically a catalog for an exhibition where we loaned a bunch of our paintings um, to the music, to Smithsonian, and, and uh, but we're going to show you a little something. I'll show you. We're going to show you a couple of uh, my personal favorite Rockwells, and I wonder if you're familiar with them. Uh, and these are available as collectible plates that came out in the 1970s. Uh, and the first one I want to show you is Butter Boy. <laughs> Now, Butter Boy, Butter Boy has uh, two pieces of bread and some butter mm -hmm. and a knife, or that could be a file. Sometimes <laughs> people think that looks like a file. Maybe he files the butter down and then spreads it with the file. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think of that, John? Give me your thoughts. I love it. Um, people forget about just simple, simple old butter and bread. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. People don't get bread really anymore at restaurants and they don't think about it at home, but it's very good. Yeah, but there's feels like there's something missing. Like it feels like this doesn't tell the whole story, does it, John? Um, Do you remember the part in uh, Empire Strikes Back when uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's force ghost says to, Gahosta, sorry, says to Yoda, that boy is our last hope. And then Yoda says, no. There is another butter girl, John. Oh. Look at butter girl. Now, John, you're looking at this, and I see you're you're not super impressed by it. But I am impressed. I, she's. I was just like distracted by how much butter she's dumping on her bread. Well, but maybe you're not able to see it clearly enough. That's what I'm nervous about. I feel like yeah. maybe if you saw her on a tray, <laughs> bigger scale, you might be able to see it because it's a little bit bigger. I don't yeah. know. You know what? I think I see what the issue is here. John already told us that that he is a two-dimensional artist himself, that he paints and he draws. So he's a little less impressed than some of our other guests because he's skilled in this area. He could do this work himself. But what if we were able to show you in a sort of more 3D sculptural relief? Would that make you understand? Oh. Here, yeah, you could see it maybe here. There we go. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. got she's got a look. She's got a real look. And she, you see the the chunks of butter I feel like are the big selling point for her. Yeah. 
Um, she but likes maybe, big butter and she cannot lie. <laughs> but maybe you need it a little bit more for you, or maybe a little bit more like, uh, 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 you know, esoteric, not necessarily this realistic version that Norman Rockwell's bring up. So maybe you need sear like this. Oh, who's right. that? And that's butter girl. girl. That's, butter girl. Girl. that's the same girl, but painted a little bit differently. Norman didn't do that one, did he? Well, I mean, look at this. It's a tribute. It's it's like an artist's it's, tribute. But maybe I I, I I don't know. I I'm not sure that I I can tell you love them, but I <laughs> I, I don't know if any of these are ringing your bell yet. Mm -hmm. It's time for butter. Get downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, we're not he here for blood. And you, 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 you just fundamentally might not be a people person. I get that. I get that. Perhaps Butter Dog could be a better entry. Please. I didn't even know there was a dog there. Yeah. We see, that's what you don't get unless you see the whole thing. the universe. Now, I mean... And and I want to say that this is something new that I'm about to show, but Other Side of the Void on Instagram sent me something this week, and I want to bring it up because I feel like maybe this is the thing. This is this got made this week. Other Side of the Void got tattoos on his legs of Butter Boy and Butter Girl with TIE Fighters and Millennium Falcons on these, their face. These are not entirely real. He sent me video of the tattoos being drawn. I, I saw in progress video. These are the entire size of his calves and this butter boy and butter girl with their faces replaced. There's no horrible. butter on his bread. Oh, there it is. It's, it's slightly yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tie's a bit off. <laughs> no, I mean, it's too late. John, let's Let's do a round of notes on this. Is he watching? Is he gonna? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do notes. Let's give him notes. Hang on. <laughs> a round of notes. Let's do a, little, a little punch up room on the tattoos. Oh, okay, so uh, I really see her better. That's that's her fine. Yeah. Definitely there. Oh yeah, boy. I like her hair work. Uh, it's Bryson. The hands look good. Bryson. Bryson, can we get a bumper for this segment where we where we give notes on uh, people's tattoos they've gotten based on the show, yeah. and and the name of it, and will be a slow reveal. Of the name of the segment will be Tattooing Got Notes. <laughs> Tattooing Got Notes. <laughs> it looks like you're going to see the word Tattooing, but it's actually right. we got notes. Yeah, we got, we got notes. John, how have you been keeping uh, entertained during quarantine? What have been the things that have gotten you through it? Um, I do a lot of walking and hiking, and then I come up with an idea, and then I go to my boyfriend, like, can you video me doing this? And then I have a video of me while he's working, and I'm really annoyed in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I do some writing. Um, I do a lot of crafting. I make some ice cream. I do a lot of ice cream making. Yeah. Um, uh, what was another thing? What flavors? Do you have favorite flavors? So I like doing mint chocolate Make. and jazzing it up and making it like really green. And then we've done um, fudge brownie, chocolate brownie ice cream. Uh, do you know Salt and Straw? They have a cookbook for ice cream. It's very complicated, but and it takes a few hours. But once you do it, it's very good. Yeah. Um, can I yeah. can I pitch a flavor to you, John? Please. Now I don't own the rights to this flavor. And I don't know how to make it, but just you're not doing this for profit. This is for pleasure, right? Right. Diet double fudge. Diet double fudge. So, like, even though there's double the amount of fudge, it's still diet. It's still diet. diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had this as a soda flavor, and I I really like it. You've had diet double fudge soda? soda? Soda. Yeah, but I've never had an ice cream. And it tastes basically like a, the chocolate in a Tootsie Roll Pop, that kind of chocolate. Okay. That's the flavor you're aiming for. But then the name, because the name tells a story. Because diet implies, oh, no. Oh, what, what, are, what are we losing? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get as much as I want. 
Mm-hmm. And then the next word comes right in with double. And it's <laughs> it's like the Millennium Falcon showing up right there. <laughs> and just like diet, that's that's like, oh no, we're not gonna be able to blow up the Death Star. And then double fudge comes in. This guy. Yeah. What is diet, double fudge. I bet like if you just make the base and then put that in. Um, yeah. It wouldn't be diet necessarily. To no, it's got to be diet. But gotta it's got to be gonna, diet. I'm diabetic, famously diabetic. diabetic. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite kind of ice cream, John? Um, so a sweet story. Yeah. When I was growing up and I would go to the shore during the summer to visit my grandmother, we called her Mumsy. She would prep um, a bunch of homemade ice cream for me before I arrived because she knew I liked her chocolate, her homemade chocolate ice cream. And I would eat like eight bowls a day and people would be like, why are you eating so many ice, so many ice cream bowls? And I was like, well, no one's stopping me. And, uh, and then she passed and years and years went by. And then I was like, let me try to make it. And we lost her handwritten ingredients uh, or her recipe on how to make her homemade chocolate ice cream. But I dabbled and took a little bit of here and there. And then I was able to figure out her flavor. And so I, so for this, this holiday season, I made friends, close friends, um, Mumsy's chocolate ice cream. Oh, and it's very good. Oh, it's so good. It's so smooth. It's got cinnamon in it. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I love that story because it's about family, but it also involves branding. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mumsy's chocolate. Mumsy's chocolate ice cream. It's it tells the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This and there's I a history to this. The person I delivered it to, and I don't think many of them cared. Like, uh huh. Okay, can you put your mask back on? Thanks. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah, no, you have to, this is a tricky thing in a pandemic. You have to spread the story without spreading the virus. Uh, it's essential. Oh, yes. It's essential. Maybe you could like write this story on the side of the carton. Like, uh, of course, mm-hmm. uh, Raspberry Royale tea on the very top has the story of how the tea was made, you know? Yeah. Not that this is talking tea with Zooks in the voice, but I'm I just mean, Mumsy, Mumsy's ice cream feels like a great brand. Oh, it's great. Now, John, if you were to cast Mumsy with a living uh, actor, who who do you think, w- who would be the ideal casting for Mumsy? What's her name? Um, uh, sister Act. K- K- what? Maggie. Maggie Smith. What? Oh, Maggie Smith. Oh, Maggie Smith. Yes. She Maggie Smith looks exact. She's looked like Mumsy since Hook. Wow. Uh, when Hook came out, I was like, that looks like Mumsy. Because Mumsy had that white hair. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think yeah. No, I mean, the ask Patrick. I'll yeah, I'll get Maggie Smith on. You I mean, George feels like he's about to blow right by the fact that he is in the movie Hook, John. Did you know that? You're in Hook, George? Mr. Lucas? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely am I in Hook. <laughs> Tell tell John where you are, George. Well, while everyone else is busy watching the adventures of Peter Pan and Captain Hook, not everybody notices that I'm dancing on the bridge with Carrie Fisher and we're smooching. It's true. Oh. It's a real fact, John. Have George and Carrie ever- Fisher oh. are kissing in the background. Have you ever of the- a photo of this to share. I've no, I don't have one now. I'll try to get you one. Patrick, don't treat this like, don't be like Bryson and the and the bag. Yeah. I look so, I look so hard. I couldn't oh, wait, find a picture oh, wait, of a bag. Is. Wait, there is a picture of this. Of course there is, Patrick. Don't be so surprised though, when you do your job to get results. This is. <laughs> it took five seconds to do something that Patrick was just insisting was impossible. That is George and Carrie Fisher smooching on a bridge. Oh, oh, I do remember that. It's when they, when they fly by and the, the dust gets on them and then they. Yeah. 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 That's so fun. I'm sure that could have gone to somebody that needed the part. But. Well, you know, the thing is, I'm trying, I'm in the middle of a project right now, uh, sort of a little covert mission to try to merge these franchises and get Hook looped into the uh, overall uh, Star Wars Disney cinematic universe. I didn't know this, George. You do know this, Patrick, because we've talked about it. <laughs> the The... John, you remember uh, in Phantom Menace the story of the birth of Anakin Skywalker, right? Of course. And and what's the story that we tell in, in that uh, in that movie? How was Anakin conceived? Do you remember? 
that he didn't have a father. Yeah. So, so like Shmi, all Shmi. right. Shmi Skywalker. Shmi Skywalker. Um, Who, Shmi? Shmi. Shmi? Shmi Skywalker uh, said, oh, I, there was no father. <laughs> and recently I got some, got some pushback for that. Because they said, well, that seems a little, uh, I don't know. I don't know that I buy that. Mm. I said, well, that's because we, I wasn't done telling the story. I never got to finish. Because the unreliable narrator, the unre you know, you can't always trust what a character tells you in a, in a work of fiction. They could be covering, hiding something. Just like Obi-Wan. You know, he, he hides the true story of Anakin uh, from Luke. And then finds out later, oh, I was fibbing a little. I, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. And the truth of it, I did not have the rights to tell, which is that the conception of Anakin Skywalker occurred after a meet cute in which Smee Skywalker met Captain Hook's bumbling sidekick, <laughs> Shmee. Shmee. And they had a stolen night of passion Regrettable, of course. She woke up thinking, how could I? How could I? <laughs> Shmi is just asleep. That fool. Captain Hook had traveled in his magical flying pirate ship to trap Peter Pan and another one of his tricks to the planet Tatooine. Mm -hmm. And in a, a 24 hours of shore leave, <laughs> Shmi sought out some libations at the Mos Eisley Creature Cantina where Smee Skywalker was drowning her sorrows uh, in, a, in, a, 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 in a beverage. It's a bit of a... They, they ordered a, a drink at the same time. And then when the name was called out, there was confusion. Oh, no, that's my... Oh, it's your... Oh, it's... Oh, my name is Shmi. Oh, my name is Smee. And before you know it, a child is born. But of course... <laughs> well, I, yeah. I want to make something very clear. People often forget that the Star Wars movies happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, okay? Mm. And Neverland is far away, but it's mm. not a different galaxy, okay? Yeah. It's still in our galactic orbit. And Peter Pan, that story is in the past, but not as far back. So Let's part see. of the, the canon is that Captain Hook's ship has the ability to travel through time and space. And so a character like Shmi Skywalker, who we think of as being human, no, she's an alien. She's from a different galaxy. And I bring this up because, George, would you mind holding up the two educational dolls you use to act out this scenario? <laughs> These are two scales. When Smee enters the Star Wars universe, we find out for the first time that the humanoid characters in the Star Wars universe are actually teeny tiny. Smee is, is a short human. He's probably five foot two. But Smee Skywalker is like half a foot. <laughs> and that's Ken. This is a Disney Plus show that we are pitching called Star Wars... Smee Shmee. Um there's a picture that someone made a few weeks ago. Uh of Shmee and uh, Ricky Barty made this. They're in love. John, something we've been doing on this show is we've been pitching our own Star Wars shows since Disney Plus announced so many. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a show that you would want to get made? Now we have no power. We can't get this made. Well, we have word of mouth. Yeah. Is yeah, there a show that power. you would want to get made? That's the most important power in, in show business is word of mouth. We, we haven't been suspended from Twitter. We have that power. Yeah. Uh, something that may, you know you could star in, you could show run. I don't know. They're, are they doing a show about all the Sith? Not really. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That whole, like, there was it's a like great a title, All the Sith. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> title. <laughs> star Wars, All Sith the Sith. Sith. Yeah. Uh, I well, I've always like I thought it was a throwaway, 
uh, with the the uh, kid on that uh, gambling planet who grabs the broom at the end. I'm like, sweet, yeah. sweet, baby. Yeah. What's his story? Yeah, broom boy, a Star Wars broom boy, a Disney Plus story. <laughs> are you are you pitching that broom boy becomes a Sith? <laughs> no, I'm assuming that broom boy becomes a Jedi Knight. I mean, that's a big assumption. It's a big assumption. Well, did you see how the way he grabbed that broom? But then he, maybe he grabbed it Darth Maul style and went. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would be really scary if you want to make a Star Wars that was really scary and start folding in? Because I think it's time to start folding in. As whether we have the rights or not, you can work that out later. You can you can always Roger Rabbit it. You can always merge get the other studio. Please, please loan me your characters. If you <laughs> beg hard enough, I think you can make it happen. Uh, uh, bring in Pennywise for. This is it. <laughs> this Sith it. This is it. <laughs> and you hire uh, one of those adorable little kids who has a who has a speech impediment. So he's like, "This is it." Because <laughs> um, Pennywise, I mean, you have to say that he's not going to become a Jedi. He'd definitely be a Sith because he's bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's got, like Sith teeth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sith teeth. That should be a thing. Get that trending. You've got Sith teeth. <laughs> that should take over for meth teeth. <laughs> Your teeth look like Sith. <laughs> this I is it. I and we can probably get Huey Lewis to re-record or, or redub um, the, their song. If this is it, <laughs> or someone can cover to, it. I don't know. It doesn't have to be I Huey. Have to ask George because we're trying to make these. So pitches uncancelable. It's mm, a oh, time where cancel culture is out of control. We want no problematic elements in any of these shows. Right. Now, I I fear you pitch the title. This is it, and I wonder: is this a way for you to get Michael Jackson in the Star Wars universe? A thing that almost happened. It is known that he was very angry that you had originally discussed with him the idea of playing Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar, yeah. Is that true? Oh, yeah, that's true. Because we'd already worked together on EO. Captain EO? Yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure he... I, 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 I had a very specific idea for how funny I wanted uh, Jar Jar to be. Very. And I don't think it was a good fit. Um, he also but sure, didn't want to be digital you you were very adamant about jar jar being digital and he just wanted to yeah. do some makeup yeah 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 and he, he wanted to do it in prosthetics and makeup yeah although there's claymation in, in uh um oh, what was the michael jackson movie that had the claymation in it was it moon uh moonwalker moonwalker moon river <laughs> It's not, George, it's not. We both just gave you the right answer. I think it was Don and I River. both just gave you the right answer. Yeah, and you, you I, think we're both, I think we're all right. I think he did two pretty, movies. One of them was called Moon Moonwalker, and another no. one was called Moon River. No, no, Moon River is the Andy Williams song popularized by Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Moonwalker is the Michael Jackson song. No, Andy Williams, Andy Williams is the name of the cowboy toy that John Williams uh, had. What are you talking about, George? I can't tell Moonstruck. if that's like a... What? Moonstruck. Yeah, Moonstruck. 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 Yeah. Oh, Moonstruck. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, John, we are talking about Jar Jar a second ago. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you have this toy in your apartment. Yes, it's it's in the kitchen. It's yeah. still there. It's it's it's, it's, it's one of the few. Apartment. It's one of the few show gifts that we don't always give gifts to guests, but we yeah. did. Nicole was so interested in this toy that uh, we tracked down one of these rare toys and had it sent to uh, the house that you live in with Nicole. Have you have you played with it? Do you know what its deal is? You squeeze it and the tongue comes out? You squeeze it yeah. and the tongue comes out. Here we go. Now, I don't know if yours came with one of these, though. What is that? This, John. He uh, can, can grab it with his tongue. It's pretty good. It's pretty I can good. see having a lot of fun with that doll. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you got to take what you can get while we're all stuck inside. We were talking about a few weeks back, we want to find this kid. We want to book him on this show. <laughs> I don't know how you go about that, but he looks like he's having such a good time. Just ask the web to track it down. Track him down. All right. So you know, right. Find out who that, who that uh, child go. model was, and presumably they're a full-grown adult now. I'm going to say this. Twitter, do your thing. That's what people always say when they want to. Yeah. Get it, get it even closer to camera. Like just focus in on right. this. Because, I mean, if they could track down all of the Nazis who raided the Capitol within. Oh. The, I think uh -huh. find also, it. and here's the thing. If it turns out that this kid. Yeah. If it turns out that this kid was one of the people who raided the Capitol building, then we've we've done something. If this is how we find uh, another one of the rioters who invaded our yeah. Capitol. Then right. so be if, it. If it turns out that kid is actually a young Josh Hawley, then unfortunately Josh Hawley will soon be a guest on the George Lucas he's, doctor. He's right. Gotta, um, John, tell me, I want to know, you know, we do this sometimes with our guests. It's 2021 right now. And over the last year, a lot of uh, uh, TV shows or movies have been like reuniting to like catch up and see where their characters are now. You know, what? how would they be handling the pandemic? And I want to know, where's Randy from Two Broke Girls? What's he up to? <laughs> so Randy was in yeah. charge of uh, escape rooms. Oh, sure. So uh, where would he be now? Yeah, what's he doing? Uh, probably teaching online class on how to design escape rooms. Okay. Okay. Is he, is he, uh, is he wearing a mask? Is he not wearing a mask? How's he handling the year? Uh, he wears a mask because he likes to wear any type of costume at all, uh, anything yeah. that he can wear. That's good. It's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that he is <laughs> doing okay. I'm glad. Um, oh, wow. John, we did just get some fan art in. I'm going to bring it up right now. It's from Captain Booth is the man's name. Uh, Captain oh, Booth. I have to say, if David Wayne were still here, he'd have a lot of fun with that name. Yeah, Captain Booth. Oh, boy. Your butter boy, John. That's you, yeah. John. The butter, John. I always thought churning butter was the sexiest thing. Like, uh, wow. You know? So that's I almost, I mean, that makes it seem like you could be a prequel character to Butter Boy and Butter Girl. Where did the butter come from? Yeah. <laughs> Someone had to churn it. You're asking the right questions. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Well, but I mean, Butter John looks good. Uh, John, if if a Butter Boy movie got made, do you want to be in the mix? Yeah, I mean, I would have to look at the script first, um, okay. you know, to make you know a wise decision. But it's all uh, about the story. It's it's about storytelling. I don't want to attach there on the page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be there on the page. John, are you offer only, or will you audition? Um, I am any offer only. Any offer, any offer only. Okay. Okay. Now, now, John, this is a very important question. And once again, we do not like to engage in gotcha journalism on this show, but sometimes stones must be overturned. Mm -hmm. And the last decade has been a very confusing time to be an American. Misinformation runs rampant on the internet. It is hard to know what or even whom to believe. Mm -hmm. And people have remained rattled at the realization some years back that Abby and Alana were never on Herald. It seems impossible that the stars and creators of Broad City were somehow never on Herald night. But I want to confirm, John, despite your legacy with the UCB theaters on both coasts, you were on Mod Night, correct? After an audition where I got denied. I think we need a scoop. I what? called my dad after, because I was like, because I kept auditioning for Harold, and I was like, okay. I'm not getting on a Harold team. What the? And so then when they were like, hey, we're going to do Mod, I was like, there we go. Okay, I'll do Sketch. That's what That's I'm good at. I'll do Sketch. And I didn't get on Sketch team. And I was like, so I called my dad, 
crying and he's like, I don't need them. God, you spent so much time with them and give them so much money. I was like, you're right, dad, you're right. And then like, I think a month or two later, uh, Anthony King called me to join uh, another team. Um, what was and the team name? I had shingles at that time. I got on mod. Uh, I didn't tell anybody, but I, I was in shingles at the moment. And then, yeah. Not you were doing sketches with shingles? <laughs> yes, I did my first. I don't, I don't think I had it at the show, but during my first couple of rehearsals, I had shingles. Wow. Wow. Now, now Patrick, asked a good follow Patrick asked a, for a good follow up question. What no. was the name of that first team? Who was on it with you? Slow Burn. Uh, Ooh. Pam Murphy. Ooh, good one. Uh, Fran Gillespie. Good one. Devin, Devlin Corrigan. A lot of good uh, ones. Matt Ballard. Um, uh, this feels uh, like the most Devin, nacha so far. <laughs> just a lot of great people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm Good. glad we got that confirmation and the real story of triumph. Much yeah. like Abby and Alana, a story of someone who didn't get on Herald Night and fucking made everyone regret it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, now, I'm, I'm not good at make em ups. <laughs> yeah, who needs them? What were some What were some of the improv scenes that you wanted to do? Wait, hang on, George. Who's in that room with you, John? Who are you looking at? Oh, uh, just a fake audience. Okay, that was a good make em up. George, what was your question? Uh, oh, thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, what were some of the improv scenes that you wanted to do that you didn't get to do mm, on Herald Night? Question. Well, I remember uh, Shannon O'Neill was a teacher once, and every time I would step, a few times I would step out and be like, who wants an apple? Selling <laughs> apples! And she said that was my go-to. I don't know. Selling <laughs> apples? I was an apple seller. Who, someone's got to want some apples. I mean, Watto, can I put you in this scene with John? Can we see what this scene is? Let's do it. Sure, you want a little improv? Okay. Yeah. Watto, Watto was never on Herald Night, you should know. And also, uh, earlier, uh, early 2020, Watto did a one-man musical review show at the wow. Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. And uh, a week later, a pandemic had ravaged America. And now three out of four UCB theaters are permanently closed. So I'm just warning you. That's what happens when Watto tries his hand at live comedy. Okay. Okay. I've you got apples it. here. Selling apples. Get your I'm, apples. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. I'm John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to stop you. Just I feel like we should ask for a suggestion first. Okay. Because that's part of the trick. People need to see that you didn't pre-plan it by getting apples. a suggestion. Apples is a suggestion. Okay. I heard you. apples. <clears throat> Get your apples. Selling apples here. Oh, an apple. Yes, please. I would like to eat one. All right. That would be 20 quid. Mm, okay. One, two, three, four. That's such five, a big bag. Seven. It's actually a box, but people make that mistake all the time. <laughs> Where was I? You were at one. Okay. Let me reset. One, two, three. Four. I really five. like your sweater. Oh, thank you very much. I bought it at the sweater store. I lost track. Let me reset. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sound like eight. you're from Italy. I'm sorry. Say again. It sounds like you're from Italy. Are you not from here? I, no, I'm from New Jersey, but people make that mistake a lot. It's a real box bag, bag flip. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So I just got to reset quickly. One. Get two. your apples. Apple a day keeps the government away. One. Two. 20 quid. Three, Sir, it's four. getting dark out. Do you have the 20 quid or not? I'm pretty sure I do, but I don't want to eyeball it. I feel like I need to really take a proper count here. Well, I'm selling all my apples. You better count quick. Okay, just try to hold on to one. I'm going to count as quickly as I can. Okay, ready? 
It's first uh, comes first serve, sir. We cut okay, to the somebody, apple man. We cut to the apple to... man alone at home after work. Oh, today was a good day. Yeah, all the apples. I sold them all. Ah, uh, it's going to be quite the healthy town, <laughs> right? Ah, uh, you know, it's good I sell apples because we don't have a doctor in this village. <laughs> okay, cut to Watto alone at home. Ah, uh, a day of highs and lows. I wanted an apple more than anything, and I thought it would solve my problem. Unfortunately, I could not count my 20 quid without getting interrupted, and we all know that is my fatal flaw, the inability to stay focused on a money count if there is any outside disruption. But as I sit back here in my apartment at the Dakota, I look around and I see 20 quid splayed out in front of me, and I realize these quid give me more joy than the apple ever could. Because I am made of CGI, food has no value to me, but I do love money. And see. Wow. Thank you, that's a show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, I do love the, <laughs> I do love the, um, the improv skip at the end. Thanks, that's a show. <laughs> What about this kind of improv clap where you're awkwardly sort of sort of trying to clap to the rhythm of the music they're playing to play you off, and then you kind of turn it into a bit where the bit is like, oh, I'm clapping awkwardly. I'm making it seem like I'm funny, but actually I'm just a white person with no rhythm. John, what was your best improv scene ever? Um, oh my goodness. It's a trick question because I think we just watched it. <laughs> Mr. Lucas. That was a so great bad. scene. It was very funny. You, we, I knew that your game was that you sold apples. It's true. But you also had sub games that I thought were good. I liked the way uh, when we cut to you alone, you didn't hesitate. You filled that scene with story. Mm -hmm. um, it was comedic that these apples that he had sold had kept the doctor away from their village. And now uh, uh, the implication that a disease was about to ravage this small uh, uh, town. Oh, you caught that at the end? That uh, was very good. Thanks. And then we yeah, brought it home with a, with a cut to Watto. And I feel like we learned a lot, but we also laughed a lot. There, there was a very subtle sub game I think you might have missed, Jordan which was that I wanted to count the money to buy the apple, but I got interrupted. No, I I think that was also funny. <laughs> An apple a day keeps the government away from Goldie Thrawn. That was very, that was very, very, very fast. fast. That's awesome. Very fast. This is a thing, John. We often say to our guests that our, our uh, viewers, our regular community, are some of the fastest, fan artist ah! in the biz. So you can say anything that you want to see oh, oh, made oh, into oh. fan art and it will be delivered in under 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there was one more. This was from before John was here, but uh, this that is, that is okay. me. Uh, John, I accidentally doxed the website that we were on uh, so anyone could see the uh, the website to come on. So that was me earlier. That's <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so if there's any fan art that you want, people will make it. Um, I, 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 I want to toss one out there. George, I think you might have had, or Mr. Lucas, I think you might have had something to do with it, but with Roger Rabbit, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not directly, uh, but yeah, I mean, buddy. but yeah, my buddies. You got Steve, you got Kathy. You got Bobby's. Yeah. Bobby you got Ray. Ray. Yeah. Roger Rabbit yeah. is my ultimate favorite, uh, best movie. You guys brought it up before about how they had all the characters yeah. from different uh, studios mixed yeah. in. Yeah. I, yeah. Did, so, did but, ILM work on Roger Rabbit? I think so. Yeah. So, so John, do you want to be? Do you, you want to be in Roger Rabbit? Is that what you want? Yes, yeah, so I want to be in Roger Rabbit with Roger. Okay. All right. Well, you yeah. got to say the magic word, John. Please. No, but you got to say it in a fun way. 
how does the rod get? Well, we got to get it clean. We got to get it clean. Let's make him full screen. Please, Eddie. There we go. There we, we go. Got it. That's a good Roger. That's a good Roger. Roger, Roger, as they say in the battle droids. <laughs> um, I, I did. I, I'm. I have a bunch of stuff here that my parents sent me, and I was able to find. I had them send me some stuff from the basement, and I found a picture of Mumsy. Oh, oh wow! Mumsy. Oh. That was like Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was also sent. I used to keep newspapers of movies on Friday because the po the movie posters were big. <laughs> yeah. And oh, so like, here's one with Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Oh man. And Look who's talking. Yeah. To Awakenings, you. Green Card, the prequel to Green Book. Bonfire of the Vanities. Bonfire of the Vanities. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just some fun stuff. That is fun. Yeah. What, George, what do you have around you? Let's all show off some stuff we have around us. Yeah, well. This pen. R2-D2 pen? Yes, yeah, R2-D2 pen you put together. Um, I just this Han Solo doll, except he's in Spanish at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I have a little golden book called I Am Skeletor. <laughs> it's an inspirational book for children who want to become evil warlords. I have a giant inflatable Pepsi can with Liam Neeson on it. I have an I have April O'Neil sticker card from the collecting, collecting cards. All right, I have a book, a paperback book of American Graffiti. A Batman folder. I have a, a photo album filled with pictures from when I went to Legoland on opening weekend. Wow. Uh, I have an adapter plug for if you want to turn something with a USB connector into a lightning connector because Apple won't stop changing their fucking outlets. Yeah. I have a little wicket. Uh, I have an R five D four. I have oh John, you'll like this one. I have a Blu ray of Don't Think Twice. Oh, improv, improv. That that you should have brought that up with Kate Mikuchi. She's in that movie. Yeah, I've seen that movie. Very oh, I have, uh, some Star Wars band aids in case I get hurt. I have this book called The One Minute Negotiator, which was written by. Um, a man named Don Hudson and George Lucas. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a Hanukkah menorah of the Rugrat, but it's kind of broken. <laughs> if you see here, it's like floppy. Yeah, but when you display it, you can't tell. I have you a map. Tell, as long as it's on a sturdy surface. Um, I also, my mom sent me, I used to get, I go to Disney World, get an autograph book. So yeah. I have like, Indiana Jones and Marion and Hey. Chip, Chip and Dale. But I was you like, mutt? Did you get Mutt? Did I get who? Mutt? No. Oh. It's a hard one. But now I'm using it as like a little notebook. Well, that's great. I have a Star Wars Mandalorian uh, Trouble Pop O Matic game. Uh, I have a near life size toy of Andy from Toy Story, a very bizarre object because it's a toy of a kid who owns toys. And also, it's unnerving to have a near real sized child just staring dead eyed in the corner of your room. Mm -hmm. I have Seinfeld seen it. Oh, I remember seeing it. That was. Remember yeah. seeing it? Let's see. I, also, I also have. Uh, I don't know <laughs> why this is here. I have a uh, Broadway Con uh, brochure from 2019. I don't know what that's doing here. I have a fan. I, I wrote Macaulay Culkin in 1991, and he wrote me back. Whoa! What? Can you read the letter? Let's yeah. Letter. Dear John, thank you for your letter. I'm sorry that I did not write sooner, but I've been traveling a lot, and it sometimes takes a long time for the mail to catch up to me. Right now I'm in Florida, but we're moving to California next week. I have four brothers and two sisters, but no dog. I also have a mom and a dad. I'm glad you enjoyed Home Alone. Sincerely, Mac Macaulay Culkin, and he signed it. Wow. And and one of the ads on, on your newspaper was Home Alone, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. I think we were together. What year is this? What year are we talking? 1991. Right in the sweet spot. And I think it came out in 1990, Christmas, and then. Yeah. Wow. Oh. I bet 
I feel like we should start celebrating Chris Columbus Day instead of Christopher That's Columbus. A good idea. Day. Yeah, less right. problematic. Less problematic. Yeah. Wow. It's really I, nice that you wrote you that letter. It is. What, was I, it, what did it feel like when you got that in the mail? I, I couldn't believe it. You know, me, I, getting things in the mail is so exciting, but like totally not expecting a reply from him and then right. getting um, Oh, I was, it was crazy. Yeah. What uh, were, uh, what were your favorite movies growing up, John? Easy. Easy. I, I mean, it's, I feel bad because I've been told this a lot. They're like, John, these are just your favorite movies because you were form forming who you were and you know, uh, but it's Roger Rabbit, 1989's Batman, Batman Returns, Edward Scissorhands, Titanic, um, uh, I guess Independence Day at the time, but no. Yeah. Phantom, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones. I, did I, I already said that? Okay. I just assumed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Captain Boof coming through again. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Now, so people will say to you that you only like those movies because those are movies that you saw and you enjoyed. When I was, yeah, they're like, those are the movies. Yeah, you saw those are just movies you saw and you liked them a lot. That's the only reason they're your favorites is because you and saw those movies. Favorite. And I watch them and I, I still really enjoy them. So, yeah, but, but you just saw them because they came out during your life and you watched them and that was part of your life was enjoying those movies, John. Exactly. Yeah, John, John, that doesn't count. You're saying they're your favorite movies because they're the movies you like watching the most? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 you're just saying that those are your favorite movies because those are the movies that matter most to you and they're the movies that you return to. That's the only reason that those are your favorite movies, John. What about the movies that you've seen that... Uh, have meant less to you uh, that you don't watch again, that you don't like as much. Why aren't those your favorite movies? How come the, your favorite movies very conveniently are all the movies that uh, that you've had a positive associations with over the course of your lifetime? Mm -hmm. You should examine that bias because yeah. it feels like you are discounting a lot of movies you don't like. Yeah, when I'm hearing a lot of I'm hearing a lot of, of of movies that you prefer. Yes, and I'm just not sure I'm cool with that. I've just been told like, oh, you just like them because you liked them when you were little. And I was like, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and but, but also, but also they leave you there to walk off with your backpack. <laughs> yeah. But, but also, you know, you liked them when you were younger and then you watched them again and you still like them and you just like them because you still like them. That's just, that's just, you I continue to like, like them. The music's still good. And but, 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 yeah. A true, a true favorite movie is something that you saw as a kid and you thought, I hate this. And then you grow up and then you think, no, this is my favorite movie. That's a real favorite. That's a real favorite. That's John, the only way you can truly have a favorite movie. Well, let's ask this, John. What's a movie you think you'll never watch again? That I liked or didn't? I'm going to let you take it however you want. Yeah, let it. you roll with it. Just roll with it, John. I'll never watch again. I mean, there's so many that I'll never. Is there a movie that you, re that you revisited that you thought, this is probably the last time I'll rewatch this? I, what are, you, what are I you going to ask me, Patrick, what's a movie that I'll never watch yeah, again? Yeah. yeah. The Passion of the Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I never saw it for the first time, so. I don't know if I'll ever watch Short Circuit again. That's your luck. I have it. I just don't know if I'll ever watch it again. God, there was a movie I watched. I was like, I don't think I ever want to watch that again, even though it was good. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. Okay. But there's okay. a few of those. I'm just like, that was really good. But I never want to see it again. Yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is so tragic. A lot of people... They go, it's great, it's a perfect movie, but it's so sad, I can't watch it again. <laughs> George, do you have one? I'm trying to think if there's a, probably Give Me Shelter. <laughs> yeah, why is that, George? Well, I that was the first movie I worked on and uh, it it features someone uh, actually dying. It's about a rock concert where uh, the Hells Angels kill someone. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a, I was a, a camera operator i was filming for that documentary and i ran out of film 
uh, I was up on the hillside um, at Altamont and uh, the camera jammed. So none of my footage was used in the movie and I've seen it. It's a good movie. I probably won't watch that again. Um, yeah, that's a good, that's a good answer. Yeah. Plus uh, I think the only, the only format I own it in uh, is this uh, is, I don't even know what this is. This Betamax, I think maybe. Hold on. Yeah. I only, I think I can't watch it again. Oh, well, George, I mean, George, I'll let you borrow it. I'll let you borrow the Blu-ray if you really want to. If that's I think really I, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I can't watch it again. Rick Room for a Dream, that's, yeah. Oh. And watching it. Yeah, I, ass I like to ask, this, right? This show has progressively just become <laughs> how many objects can we preset in our living room during the week in case they come up in conversation. I mean, I right. don't think people can even conceive of what a fucking trash pile my apartment is now because of the amount of things I want to have at hand per chance <laughs> an opportunity arises. Boy. John, who is, who is your favorite SNL host to work with? Um... Well, I really connected with uh, Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. He was really nice. Uh, we hit it off. I played his back end of a, a cent or a, he's a centaur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, centauri vodka. And uh, so I was the back end of him. So we got close. I was behind him the whole time. So we got close that way. And then he came over at the after party and like hung out with my brother and sisters. And then he gave me a huge hug. And then he wrote me a nice letter and me can't it was just very nice and then of course lady gaga was great yeah um, we, her and i wow. connected too and she was fantastic yeah what now if i'm remembering works. what'd you say george if i'm remembering was the the centaur sketch uh did something happen with that live on the air uh, uh i'm trying to think if there was something yes so uh, he <laughs> he left the sketch like two pages early right and so I was trying to like stop him actually, like, no, it's <laughs> too right. And uh, so Taryn Kilm was dressed as Bruce Jenner and we didn't even get to see <laughs> Bruce Jenner because they had to cut out quickly. <laughs> wow. wow. And, and the rehearsal, because sometimes when something goes wrong uh, on the East Coast feed, they'll swap out the rehearsal for the rerun or for the West Coast feed. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, really those days are over now because we're getting it live on the West Coast now. Right. Um, and I think that was after they'd made that switch, right? No. It wasn't? It was before? It was before they made the switch, yeah. So they so they changed it for uh, uh, California, I think. So I've never seen the original version then. I've only seen the special edition. Or, or would that be the special edition if they swapped out the rehearsal? Look at this guy. Oh, this is real chicken or egg type situation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Let's see it. Um, now you're in the Saturday Night Live uh, when they do a Christmas when they do their Christmas specials. Uh, you, you're in that, right? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, and yeah, yeah, I'm very thankful for that. That's really fun to. Well, it's see. not a Thanksgiving special; it's a Christmas special, John. Yeah. Yes, don't give thanks. Don't give thanks for a Christmas special. That's the wrong way to do it. Give a present. Give a present. Yeah, give a, give a present John. <laughs> Every time you feel thankful to be in that Christmas special, give a present. It can be to yourself. <laughs> it doesn't have to be to someone else, but give a present. Give a present. Wow. Wow. What a, wow. What a good wow. thing to keep in mind. <laughs> Sometimes Watto doesn't make jokes. Sometimes he tells the truth. Yeah. I, I don't that. think... I don't feel the pressure to always be on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Some comedians, they always feel like they need to be on. Sometimes I want to be real. Yeah. John, what is your what is your dream project that you haven't accomplished yet? Um, well, I have a movie that I want to get made, so I'm just rolling with that right now. And yeah. that seems like I love the story and that would seem and to star in it would be great and that just would be like a, a new dream, a ne the next dream. Because uh, I feel like you get lots of dreams in your life, so that's my next goal. That's good. That's very fun. Uh, 
George, what are you looking at? I'm always <laughs> doing research while we do this someone, show. Someone pointed sure. out that George and I look like uh, a before and after picture tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, do you want me to do it too? Okay, hang on. Yeah, match it. Match it. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, you guys yeah. are are becoming. Matchy, more yeah. more. I think we're a little matchy matchy today. A little matchy matchy. John, what's what's going to be for dinner tonight? What is the what's what's in the oven? What yeah, are you yeah, cooking? It's quinoa, broccoli, uh, this fake meat called kiorn, and okay. peas, and a little bit of soy sauce. Wow. All right, sounds very good. That sounds pretty good. What uh, have you have you been cooking more now that you've been at home, or cooking less, or what has been? Have you found something uh, that you've unexpectedly been doing more now that you're at home? Well, yeah, cook every single dinner. That uh, mm -hmm. that's what's been happening in quarantine. We do a big shop once every two weeks, um, and then kind of lay out the menu what we're gonna have. So a fun thing that I like that I think fajitas which is fajitas, but it's just fun. And you have all the, you know, the fix in, so you can make your own fajita and you can make it fun, have fun with it. So mm -hmm. fajitas happen once a week. I do uh, vegan chili. Uh, I turned vegetarian just because I got bored and I was like, well, there's lots of new fake meat out there. Why not try it? Yeah. Uh, so. What's been your favorite kind of fake meat? Uh, it's um, uh, Impossible Burger. Yeah. I just, they're all pretty good, but I, I just like that texture and taste the best. Lots of is there, is there Is there a particular place that does an Impossible Burger uh, that's your favorite? No, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the type of right. brand. No, but like Burger King has an Impossible, like people prepare it different ways. Oh, I, 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 you, like, you like the raw material. You're saying I, you I, like, I, that's I, your I, favorite I, thing to cook with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you had the BK, mm -hmm. is it good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I I had I had an Impossible Whopper, and it gave me diarrhea, but it definitely felt like it was a far more humane diarrhea than I usually get from eating Burger King. It was yeah, a, it was, it was a free. Morally, yes, yes, it was morally a, a far easier uh, batch of diarrhea to live with. <laughs> Um, we did get some more fan art. I want to show this. Hang on one second. Uh, we got Who Framed John Milheiser is this one. Fantastic. Uh, let me try to bring some more up. Oh, th oh that's me because I was doxing earlier. So Doxy. Yeah, that's great. He, he yeah. doxes himself. Doxy doxy himself. I believe this is you, John. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh uh, what else do we got? Oh, we got this one with you and Charles Fleischer in his Roger Rabbit outfit. That's awesome. Do you guys follow him? He's on Instagram and he has like 20 followers. Really? Yeah. He's kind of like a bit nutty. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. But I sort of follow actually, him. I don't know. I felt bad. I didn't know. I'm, I'm actually now surprised that Charles Fleischer has not yet been a guest on the George Lucas talk. That I'll feels this. like something. You know what? Can I give a scoop? He did say yes, and then just never sent over a date. So I will try again. <laughs> that would be very cool. Oh, you don't want him? No, no, no. I do. I do want him. No. But you just Patrick, never learn how to take yes for an answer, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. So I will try, Patrick, don't burn the yes. Burn yeah. the yeah. The ask was already burnt, but I will try yeah, to. Then you burn the yes too. You can't burn anything, you little pyromaniac. The ask. That's right. I knew that you never were on Herald Night, but I didn't know that you didn't even bother to take the classes. What does that mean? Say, say yes uh, and yes. Not no, but. <laughs> yeah. He says no, but I'm too busy burning a bag of yeses. And then you look at a picture of it and it's a box of yeses it's because of Bryson yeses. couldn't find a bag. <laughs> Patrick's got Bryson disease. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we'll try. I'm glad that I, I'm going to go follow him. Let's all go follow Charles Fleischer on Instagram. Let's do it. Let's all, let's like the Pied Piper. You, you, you take us to Charles Fleischer and we all follow. Okay. His, his, uh, handle is 
Mo leads two seven three seven. M O Mo leads two seven three seven. This is him. I think he does some weird art too. Yes, it's a lot of it's a lot of art, which is uh, wild. Um, wow. Oh wow! One of his recent photos uh, is his character from the Polar Express, <laughs> which I'm going to bring that up. Look at him. Oh, wow. Of course, he's the elf. I will say, I did see this and I got nervous, and then I clicked on it. And it's a lot of people saying, no, go away. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. What does that mean? What is happening? I don't know. I, I'm hoping that it's anti, but we'll find out. Hold on. No, well, let's find out first. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of wild art in here. Oh no, we need to research this, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> I'm glad for Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. The top comment is from Rachel Fleischer, who seems to be a relative of his, and her comment is an emoji vomiting. And then Mo Leeds commented underneath, ha 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 ha. I don't know what that means. I He's don't not- either. He probably I, just is like, ah, uh, you're offended. <laughs> well, no, hold on. Okay, hold on. Sean Deckard in the comments said the dissolution of these people is necessary. And then Fleischer said dissolution is the only solution. It will happen. Natural selection removes imperfection. We're good. We're good. Right? Yeah. It rhymes, but it seems negative. Very weird to post that on January 3rd without any sort of caption. A rare glimpse behind the curtain at the process by which this show is put together. (laughs) Oh, boy. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Oh, no. Let's just say this. If if this show had had the power to cancel Holly's book deal, we would have done it. (laughs) We would have. We tried. Can we say this? We did try very hard. Yeah, it, it happened, but no thanks to us. It just happened on its own. But we were working very hard to make sure that his book deal was canceled. Yeah. 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 And I'll say this. I know I don't have the... I'll say this. And I know I don't have the authority to say this, but Josh Hawley will never write a Star Wars book. Wow. Never. Yeah, Noah Hawley might. Noah Hawley might get around to yeah, that. Yeah, Noah Hawley might. Not all Hawley. There's good hollies and bad hollies, and Josh is a bad holly. Can I say something uh, now that the the uh, Fleischer gate opened up, the yeah. the uh, gates of uh, uh, oh. uh, Trump fears, uh, Trump uh, supported our adjacency. Sure. Uh, one of my least favorite things is the the parody Trump hat, where you have the red hat with the same lettering. And then you write something else instead, like make America cupcakes again mm-hmm. or whatever. Because mm-hmm. it's like, guess what? I'm not taking the time to read what's on the hat. <laughs> you right. know, like I, I saw a guy on the streets of New York City and he was wearing the hat and he was walking around like this. And I was just giving him the death glare. Like, you fucker. These are my streets. Watto runs this town. We have no place for you and your Trump bigotry. And then he got closer and the hat said, make America gay again. And I was like, well, we're on the same side, but I wasn't going to give you the benefit of the doubt because the thing looks too much like the thing I hate. Yeah, yeah. the damage is done. Like, damn yeah. done. Oh, hey, he must have had. He was like, oh, no, breathe the hat. <laughs> yeah. he was like, I was looking at him. He was sort of like this. And I was like, how dare this guy be so friendly to strangers? With yeah, uh, I will say America in 2021 is is not a country that reads the fine print. No, <laughs> <laughs> I will say uh, I I will say admit to some fondness for one. Uh, I, I don't think I think you're correct in, in practical terms. A practical um, spoof hat is a bad idea because from a distance it it just reads as the hat, yeah. and it's yeah, like yeah. A, it's like an accidental vote in support of it. But it, among the digital ones, my preference is for because uh, I like the. I think you can get away with a digital spoof. You know what I mean? If you see it digital, then the spoof reads. You you have time to read the thing. And I think my preference is for the one that quotes David Lynch's Blue Velvet, Red Hat, and just says he put his disease in me. 
Now I, I did find true. I did find a tweet. This is uh, you know unvetted, unverified. But Tristan Petty in June said, and both Charles Fleischer and Christopher Lloyd hate Trump, which is all the more fitting. Great. Okay. So, so two sources, two sources confirmed. Yeah, yeah. So I think. Uh, all right. Know. So so uh, uh, don't burn the yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wild. Um, do you have any ice cream for tonight, John? What are you going to have after yeah. dinner? What's for dessert cream? tonight, John? Um, dessert. Uh, some cookies from Kevin Bacon. Uh, it's a not the Kevin Bacon. It's oh. a it's a B A K I N apostrophe. Yeah, I love it. Kevin Bacon. Okay. Oh my God. Have you had them fun. before? Yeah, they're good. They're very good. Oh. Are there? Let I me mean, let's plug it. Are they Los Angeles based? Are they? They are Los Angeles based. They okay. have a great like brown sugar cookie. It tastes like you're eating just brown sugar. Yeah. Peanut yeah. butter cookie. Long time, so. Um. Butter cookie. Butter cookie. A cinnamon cookie. Butter cookie. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, what's it called? French toast, Ooh. cinnamon French toast, cinnamon, cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, wee oui, wee. Oui. Toast, toast crunch could be, yeah, yeah, wee oui, wee. Oui. Wow, very good. The taste you it's normally the taste you can see, but in this case, it's yeah, the taste you cook e. Yeah, to quote the gremlins, yum yum. <laughs> yes, and to quote the mogwai. I went to a photo shot with the Mogwais. The Mogwais looking. Uh, I I photoshopped them in place of the Mogwais poster. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That is good comedy. I like that. That's I great. Want, hang on. I I want a bunch of Mogwais photoshopped around Charles Fleischer, like he's just hanging out with them. That's what I and, want. And I would like someone to make. Uh, Let's go ahead and pitch this Mogwise versus Pennywise and have a bunch of Mogwise who are fighting Pennywise. Uh huh. Yeah. And I, and I want Charles Fleischer standing between the two of them saying, I want to make it very clear that I don't support you. Yes. So Mogwise on one side, Pennywise on another side, Fleischer in the middle. Maybe he's wearing a referee shirt and he's got the whistle and he's like, I just want to make it very clear. I don't support Trump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Using picture to post. Very. Cut and cover is saying in the comments that the plural of Mogwai is Mogwai. And I'm saying that well, language evolves. We, language is constantly special editioning itself. Yeah. Now look at this, because I don't know if this is something that John wants, but they photoshopped him in with Howard the Duck. Oh, oh, I love yeah, Howard, yeah, the Howard the Duck. Oh, yeah, thank you. Boobs. Yeah. 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 Duck <laughs> yeah. Every uh, day that you've been watching, duck tits. Oh, ooh. yeah, taking baths and sitting in baths with duck tits. Ooh, ooh. There's no way we'll never get it exactly the same time. That's the worst thing about Zoom is you can't. There, there was the one time we synced up, but the irony is. If we are trying to do it at the same time, never it happen. doesn't sync up. It only works if we fuck up on their timing relative to each other, and then the internet somehow delivers them at the same time. Also, I think not syncing up isn't as bad as what Jeffrey Tubin did. That's fair. Oh, you're talking about the uh, uh, Zoom dick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least Pee Wee Herman was in an X-rated movie theater. It's our Jeffrey taking out his Zoom dick. You know what's a really good movie that uh, is still good? Yeah. Duck Tales and the Secret of the Lamp. It is a good one. Yeah. And you know why it's good? Yeah. Because it's also scary. And the bad guy dies at the Like, it's like, it, it's good. Oh, like, I, feel yeah, like I, love it when the, I love it when the bad guy yeah. dies at the end. Because it's like, you were bad and now you're dead. Mm -hmm. And that's the story. That's what you get. I think they don't kill that anymore. 
I think when a bad guy dies, sometimes it's good when a bad guy dies, but at the end he's like, I learned something. And sometimes it's like, I learned nothing. Either way, it's a good death. (laughs) I I learned that the death in a movie was Edward Scissorhands killing uh, Andrew Michael Hall at the end. I was like, not not expecting that, but it was cool. Or or like Grand Moff Tarkin, where he's just like, I'm I'm winning. And then he's like, gone. It's like, no, you're dead, you old fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. George. Yeah. What? I hate him. Cool. I think Grandma Targon is yeah. so mean. He blew up a planet. You you want me yeah, to? Oh, I'm sorry. Should I watch my language? He he blew up Alderaan. Jesus, Patrick, don't apologize for Grandma Tarkin. Yeah, Patrick. What? Are, do you want to pitch an editorial to the New York Times about how we should take some time to listen to Grandma Tarkin? Put your face in the her. stream, Patrick, while you're taking your medicine. Not either Grand Moff Tarkin's motivation. Let's be more sympathetic to Grand Moff Tarkin. Maybe he's got economic anxiety. That's what yeah. you think. Yeah, you, think Grand Moff in New York economic anxiety? you think Grand Moff Tarkin has economic anxiety? I don't need to read your op-ed. Consider the source. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> that fucking shoeless motherfucker can blow up in the Death Star along with everybody else who works there. When you love someone, you want to protect them, Patrick. Oh boy. Oh boy. John, what are you, uh, are you reading any books right now, John? Yes. What are you reading? Talk to us, John. John. Talk to us, John. It's embarrassing. Don't be embarrassed. It's a safe place. It's a book, John. Uh, Finding Freedom. It's uh, a Prince Harry and Meghan Markle book. Sure. How is it? Good. I'm doing it for research. It's it's actually very sweet. It's a nice love story, and uh, that's what I'm getting from it. Uh, it's a uh, it's it's yeah. It's history. Uh, yeah, and yeah. also her story. Also her story. Her story too. Yeah. Um. Oh wow! I'm reading. I'm reading some of the reviews on Google. Seems like some people are not Megan fans. Mm. And that's why they're tanking it. Yeah. That seems unfair. Yeah. Um, okay. I can't make a judgment call on Megan. I think she's smart. She does a lot of good. And yeah. it seems like they're in love. Uh, I'm sure being in the royal family it's tough. is limiting. Yeah. And yeah. she doesn't want to do that. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I like that they're in love and they're willing to like peace out on this like. Yeah. Establishment. Yeah. So. I, I also just feel like Meghan Markle haters aren't really being fair. I mean, I feel like it's just a byproduct of a long held allegiance to, uh, the, you know, BBC British mm-hmm. uh, provocative teen dramas that they used to love. I also think it's a, uh, he's second in, in line. So he's just a prince in waiting. And I think that uh, role can change. Like, sure. He can sure. go off and do his own thing. He doesn't need to be sitting around. But he's out now, right? He does. He said, "I don't want it." Yeah, he doesn't. He's not a prince, is he? He lost his head. Yeah, they both lost. I, do, I just want to propose the punchline to the joke I did not deliver. Yeah, I didn't hear what you were. What were you saying? What? What I said was that people who dislike Meghan Markle are showing their allegiance to British provocative teen dramas from the two thousand. Yeah. Which was to say it's it's a suits versus skins issue. Cause she was on suits and skins oh. the BBC show. Ah. Motto. Somebody did say it was all the racism though. Uh and that could be also true. Yeah, also yeah. lots of racism. Yeah. People like it in the comments, Watto, so you're you're good. Yeah. Watto innocent. Watto innocent. <laughs> the best jokes are the ones you have to double back around to and then say, I'm sorry, I did not get to say my punchline and then over it. Watto innocent. Watto innocent. Watto innocent. Say it, Patrick. Watto innocent. <laughs> Consider the source, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Consider the source. I mean, John hasn't said Watto innocent, so I don't think Watto's innocent yet. Watto innocent. Okay. Hashtag Watto yeah. innocent. Before okay. at the four. <laughs> oh boy John how much longer do you think we're going to be inside I think 
two months. Oh, wow. wow. That's very optimistic. Well, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Great. I hope so. My parents are scheduled to get the vaccine like in late January and then, you know, two months go by and then it's yeah. our turn. And yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say the same answer as John, but I'm just gonna add the word many in between those two words and change the style. So just be, it's the same answer, but I'm gonna say too many. Hang on, let me ask. Let me ask, George. How long do you think we'll be inside? Two months. <laughs> and I want to I want to also uh, third John's answer. And uh, do you want me to ask? Watto, how long do you think we'll be inside? Uh, I think we're going to be inside for another in two months. Oh, okay. Great. I said 15 years in two months. I just said the 15 years quietly. I think pretty much the 2020s are, we can write them off and we'll hit stride somewhere mid 2030 something. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Everybody get ready. Two months from now, we will be outside. Yes, and I also agree that it will be two months from now. Wow. I'm, We're not, just, I'm not going to take a stand on this. You're not going to take a stand? You won't take a side? I don't think so. Draw Patrick into the uh, Mogwise versus Pennywise fan art way back behind uh, uh, Charles Fleischer <laughs> hiding in the trees saying, I won't take a stand. I won't take a stand. <laughs> He was so reticent to say Watto innocent, who shows you how much Patrick is just, he's constantly pitching new New York Times op-ed pieces, trying to remain impartial to very clear, clear. Yeah. I mean, these are not the morally gray issues, Patrick. No, I know. I know. It's a dirty <laughs> um, John, 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 you play John. a tour guide on love. Have you ever been a tour guide in real life? No. Okay. Were you a studio tour guide? I'm trying to remember. No. Oh, on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, a fake studio. Yeah, fake studio. Uh, I was the tour guide. And the way to be a tour guide is to just talk up and down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you were showing off? It was, uh, it was a set of um, a show called... Which something? Oh, oh, it was the show that he was writing. Paul Russ was yeah. writing. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, tour guide, I feel like, is a hard job. George, would you ever be a tour guide? Star what? Tours. Star Tours. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, without really hesitation. If there, was a day that, that if there was a day that 3PO couldn't show up for it, I'd be like, put me in. Put me in, coach. Yeah, yeah I'll do Star Tours today. Sometimes Rex would ask for a little break and you'd tap in. Yeah. Hey, I'll do it. Rex, go uh, take 10. I love the idea of the Disney employees taking Rex out and saying, oh, he couldn't make it today just right. so you could go in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I might I might do it as me or I might do it as uh, Baron Papanoia. <laughs> it's also, I just feel like Rex got a lot of chances. I know he's a nice yeah. droid. But he yeah. fucked up that tour several times a day. And yeah, people and kept on saying, no, he's new here. He's new here. He doesn't know what he's doing. He did but that for like 20 of, years. That's why that's part of the fun comedy of his silly name. Because on the one hand, it's a, it's a, it's a normal name to have. But it is also the word Rex, which is yeah. a, both a, a plural noun for things mm -hmm. that have been uh, destroyed. It's also a verb, meaning like Rex. It's not just who he is and what he creates, but it's what he does. He wrecks things. Yeah. And also, mistakes. I mean, mistakes. Yes, he had an uneasy temperament. I mean, to some degree, he was also a nervous wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's break down the other. <laughs> Hold on. This, this, this is Gizmo right. with the body of Grogu <laughs> wearing a Make America game. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Charles Fleischer would post this on his Instagram without hesitation. <laughs> no, I have to ask. 
could we legally get away with selling this as a t-shirt? <laughs> oh, that's a good, maybe a drawing. Yeah. I just, I like this without any context. I just <laughs> like this image. I, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and it. say, I know we joke around a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and say 100%. If you are there on opening day at the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art, I promise you, I promise you, when you walk in the door, there will be that poster will Hang be on. hanging on the I'm wall. Gonna, I'm gonna bring in uh uh Bryson and ask if we get a drawing of this, could we sell it as a t-shirt? Bryson? Right. Bryson? Yeah, I'll, I can right. get Forrest on the drawing. Great, oh. great. All right, Forrest will do it for us. Thank you, Bryson. Love, thank you, Bryson. Love that outside the bag energy. Yeah, I tried to make things on Zazzle.com, uh, which is like make your own t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and I've tried to like do Roger Rabbit stuff or Titanic stuff. And they're like, sure, we'll make it. And then like three days later, like, oh, no, we can't. I was like, ah. Do you know, you know what's really annoying about that if we're complaining about the mouse and their legal ways? They used to have a partnership with Zazzle.com and you could log on and pick like which characters you wanted and make your own things. And it was legally licensed by Disney. And then oh, they wow. ended that at some point, but for like five years, you could do that. I didn't know that. And it was out for a while. It was great. It was great. I Wato has a t-shirt of the Muppet Newsman. Mm -hmm. No one was ever going to mass produce that, but it was like subsection, Muppets, clip art, pick, shirt, print, ship. Open where? Wado, how quickly could you go get that shirt now? I can look for it. I need to look through my laundry. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Um, wow. wow. Uh, Steamboat Zazzle. <laughs> <laughs> Their stuff is great. High quality. I love them. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Um, I just I, I what, just, what's, what's happening, I'm, Patrick? No, what's I'm just gone? thinking about this picture. I think right. we need to look at this picture again. Hang on. What does it mean? What is it saying? There's so many things about it. Yeah. However you interpret it. Yeah. Uh, oh, shoot, not that one. Where is it? There it is. Um. Yeah. There's just so many things. It's so funny. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> I my favorite part of it is that he has the Grogu hands still. He doesn't have he doesn't have the Mogwai hands. He's got the Grogu hands. Could the Mogwais be in the same universe as uh, Absolutely Yoda? Absolutely. Like, um far far away. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Could I think they are. I mean, George, hang on, let me let me double check this, but I think HBO is doing a Gremlins show. Are they? That I believe is a prequel. Yes, it is a Ooh. prequel to Gremlins, George. That's I'd love to hear that. That's awesome. It's so now Gremlins 3, it's a prequel. It's a, it's a prequel, and it is, uh, oh, John might like this, uh, once you explain it to him. One of the executive producers on it, George, is Brendan Hay, who's the hey. producer of Star Wars Detours. That's right. And also his last name is one of my lines of dialogue in Beverly Hills Cop 3. <laughs> Say it. Say hey! It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I've always wondered what happened before Gremlins, because we know what happened after Gremlins, because we, we have Gremlins 2. Yeah. We never we found out what happened. Too. That was, that's so, I love it. It's so it's fun. Crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's so fun. great. Uh, even though... I will say that uh, John Glover's endearing portrayal of Daniel Clamp may have unintentionally, and it might be the smallest of percentages, but it unfortunately, through no fault of the movie or, or, or certainly his performances, it's so wonderful and so charming. And it's clearly based, Clamp Tower is Trump Tower and Daniel Clamp is Donald Trump to some extent, an amalgamation of a couple different 1980s uh, um, you know, people who portray themselves as, as uh, titans of wealth. I worry that Gremlins 2 may have added to the myth-making that helped fool a lot of people into thinking that 
um, Donald Trump would be a, a good businessman whose skill set would uh, translate nicely towards being in charge of the whole country. Mm -hmm. There is a part of me that it's hard to revisit Gremlins 2 without thinking this movie may have done more actual damage than all of those Gremlins put together. But you also get sad when they all attack Leonard Malton. I do, because Leonard, Leonard doesn't deserve that. No. He's a good guy. Uh, he, he's an uh, uh, enthusiast, a champion of film. He's someone who has uh, helped uh, um, keep a lot of uh, film legacy, keep attention on a lot of really good things in, in the history of, of cinema. Mm -hmm. And to see him torn apart by those uh, creatures, it's all in good fun, but still, it's still painful to see while also being very funny. Mm -hmm. John, how many tiger pillows are on that couch? Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. That's yes. a lot. And John, this is that's, a John, if you don't count the Ewok movies, Woo! that's the number of Star Wars movies that I uh, produced. John, can you make a pillow fort with those pillows? I can. Let's see it. We got to <laughs> see it. <laughs> Let's make it. All right. This is how we make fun for ourselves, John, while we're stuck inside. We got to do things like this. Oh, Sly, Sly McAwesome says you're a tiger pillow king. That's good. Use more of the pillows. <laughs> you only use half the pillows. <laughs> Why would you? You have six pillows at your disposal. You could make a palace. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now we're now, now we're talking. We're now we're talking. Now we're oh, talking. I'm going to come back. Oh yeah. Oh, if we can compete, if we can complete this pillow fort before Waddle gets back, he'll be so impressed. Oh, oh, oh. Chair, look at that chair. Look at that chair. Does that? Do you sit in that chair when you're bad? <laughs> <laughs> wow. George, I love it. My favorite part of this whole show is the accidental re reveal of that chair. George, can you, hey, you did all make pillow. George, can you make a pillow fort too? Yeah, I, yeah, I'll make a pillow fort. Right. Hold on. Whoa! Good. <laughs> oh, that's really hard. We got a Sex in the City pillow. Well, no, this is an Arliss pillow. Oh, Just God. have some Sex in the City people hanging around on it. <laughs> wow, Patrick, yeah. you're for it. This is a lot. I'm going to go downstairs. Okay. All right. Oh, he's tricking us. Hold on. I got to put the Arlo slide on this. I built it wrong. <laughs> it's so hard to build this pillow fort. Watto, come back, Watto. Water will come back. Oh, I really want water to come back and see this pillow fort. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, Watto. What? what? I made the pillow fort. Oh, Watto's two steps ahead of us. <laughs> Watto, watch. I'm going to use the elevator. Okay. Oh, man, John got himself one of those luxury pillow forts. Mine's a walk up. Hey, can I show you guys something? Yeah. yeah. Hey! Hey! There he is. It doesn't fit very well with my belly, but it is a Zazzle Muppet Newsman shark. Yeah. Hey, look, Sandra is finally on the show. <laughs> God, John, if you knew the trouble we had trying to book Sandra. 
We couldn't do it. She's the ungettable guest. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. He snug, snug as a bug in a rug and pillows. Yeah. Hey, I didn't realize we've we've passed the Irishman Plus. Oh, George, you got to explain our format to John. John doesn't know our format. John, our short episodes, because sometimes we do really long episodes, but most weeks we just do a short episode, and our format is that our show just has to be one minute longer than Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. We call it The Irishman Plus. <laughs> And we, we passed it about 10 minutes ago. I forced my parents to watch The Irishman when they were visiting for Thanksgiving last year. Yeah. They're like, we don't want to watch this anymore. I was like, sit down. Watch it all. You use the force. Mm -hmm. You forced them to watch it. And yet, what you were thankful for was not that they watched the rest of The Irishman, but that you were in the Saturday Night Live Christmas special. Yes. And I'll give presents next year. Wouldn't it be a funny tradition to start? And it would only take a few people to do it. If next year for Thanksgiving, you bought everybody presents. <laughs> we'll see. And and next I think Christmas it would be really funny because the first time the first time that people do it, everyone else will be unprepared. So you'll be the only one who got presents for everybody. So it'll actually probably cause kind of weird fights if people start doing presents for Thanksgiving. But then on Christmas morning, your family comes down and they go, why are there no presents under the tree? And you go, because I I'm only giving thanks this year. <laughs> Let's swap them up for 2021. Thanks gifting. Ethan Runt, the funniest man in the chat. Ethan Runt said thanks gifting. Well, gentlemen, I have to eat din din. So I have, I, have, I have to start making the um, quinoa. Of course, John. It's been so nice to have you. I'm so happy that you were around long enough to build a tiger pillow for it. I was so happy to be here for this long. This is a lot of fun. John, thank you for coming. You're the best. You're the best, thank and you, I miss John. you all. We miss you. We miss you too. Hopefully, we'll see you someday. Come back anytime. I will. Oh. Enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your din din. Thank you. Enjoy your Sunday night, fellas. See ya. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Guys, I feel sad that John left. I do too. But I don't I don't want to feel sad anymore. I what want to feel glad. Sometimes it feels good to be Vlad. I'm feeling good about feeling Vlad.
Oh, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the vlog. Is that the end? Watto. Now, it's been a while, but I... Do you want to do your... It's been a while! It's been a while. Do you think it's time to do your segment? I think it is. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be much happier with the results as I say it's time Watto's not yet, hold on it's time for Watto's mailbag Oh, here's the mail, it never fails It makes me want to wag my tail When it comes, I always wail Mail! That'll do, Bryson. That'll do. <laughs> Folks, I got three very nice things in the mail from friends of the show this week. And I felt like increasingly this has been a thing, people sending us very nice items. And I thought we should maybe set the precedent of a regular segment. Patrick, I know you show off the Abigail shirts every week, but yeah. let's Let's provide a structure because I feel like this is happening more and more and I'm so touched and I feel like we should show the appreciation on air. So this week, the internet was a buzz with the release of the official George Lucas talk show, Pretty Good Pins says, right? Pretty okay pins, pretty okay pins. Well, I got the name. And I ordered a set myself. The second day went up. I ordered the set here in a nice Ray Ziploc bag. We got the main four. This is another set I got in the Kylo bag. And then, of course, we got these little pins. Good to be Vlad, Bumpers United, Butter Boy, Butter Girl. And for folks who don't already know, have not seen them, it's prettyokpins.com as seen below on the screen. You get this beautiful postcard. There's a backing card. And then look at this. Shit. How crazy. great is that? It's crazy. And, then, right? yeah. and I believe it's there are, detail. as far as I know, there are still a few available. There's uh, still a few available. Who knows if there will ever be a second run. Yeah. But a portion of the proceeds go to charity. All the, all lovely the profits. All of the profits. All profits. The, the profits that they get from the pins go to charity. Uh, Unbelievable. I hear there are six and, available. And I'll say this. Maybe if all six sell out, maybe there will be more. I don't know that for a fact. I have not run that by anybody. But I think if they sell out and there shows that there's a demand for more. Now, yeah. I do want to say, I do want to say, yeah. I hope that if people are buying the this limited first run of these pins that are going to uh, help uh, feed America. Yeah. I hope later on, if they make more because of popular demand, you won't get mad and say, I thought we were going going to feed America a little bit. Yes. No. We sh we no should that's not the intent. The intent is to feed America a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, but I want to say because... Really good, uh, really good pins. Pretty Okay Pins was planning to send each of us a set complimentary. And because I had already ordered with my beloved money, she threw in some very nice bonus items like this patch here. Things that are for general sale. A lot of candy, which Watto appreciates because yeah. Watto's got a sweet tooth. And this yeah. Ray spoon, a spoon right. of Ray. Right. That I, I have used for my I got, I got the BB 8 spoon. I got Chewbacca. Hey, wow. I, got I got some Laffy Taffy. But uh, these these are two specific things I want to show off here. More than two specific things. But this was a bag of throwing in some bonus Pretty OK pins. Because uh, if you go into the Pretty OK site, there are lots of other pins not GLTS related. And these are uh, so high quality. I will show just a few of them. But this is uh, a UR Lisa Simpson pin. Ooh, my favorite cool. moment in the history of the Simpsons. This is a... Uh, a Candyman pin in anticipation of the upcoming reboot. It's a Candyman pin with rotating bees. I mean, these are like complex uh, pins. 
Sam Neill enjoying a movie in the theater. We got this one, The Witches. Angelica Hilston, The Witches. And look at this. Let me get this right. It's like the transformation, the reveal. But this is the thing. There was a very nice note included that I will not share because it was a personal note. But included was a bonus thing that I swear to you, I opened last night and it almost made me uh, cry. Uh, Pretty Oak Capins uh, included uh, a drawing they made of two of Watto's best friends. Now, earlier we were talking about some of Watto's best friends, right, George Patrick? <laughs> LDP, Bobby, yeah. Sarah Nathan. But we left two big figures off the list. Jeffrey? Oh, wow. That's better than Jeffrey. That's right. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful drawing, and Watto is going to treasure it. Now, speaking of beautiful art that Watto plans to frame at his home, I got sent another item that will soon be framed and affixed to the regular backdrop of this show from another dear friend. Ooh. Oh, you got it. I got it. Oh. This what is a say? Swedish poster for <laughs> Terbaka Terfrantidin. <laughs> and Leah timed it. She signed it. Leah Thompson, Watto, Alsnaka, Medicina, which is the beginning of <laughs> the tagline, the Swedish tagline. She just, as an inscription, wrote the first four sweetest words of the tagline. So Watto, of course. So it is very funny. Let me figure out what just those first four <laughs> words translate in, okay? Let me translate this tagline in Swedish. And the Swedish tagline for Tilbaka <laughs> Tilfrantidin is talking to your parents is easy as long as you do not have to do it before you were even born. <laughs> And by only including the first four <laughs> words, Leah's inscription is talking to your parents. <laughs> XO. Which I have to say, Leah I have Watt. to say, uh, that would be my pitch if they were to make another Star Wars holiday specialist. Let's meet Watto's parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then I also want to show, where, where is it? Here it is. Uh, Abigail Noy, much discussed. Sympathetic Inker sent Watto a t-shirt because Watto has not been getting the t-shirt. Patrick, we wear a t-shirt every week. He's lousy with t-shirts. But Watto got this beautiful shirt. Oh. Watto, though. Watto. It's a beautiful shirt. It's yeah. a beautiful shirt. I also just, as relevant to the Watto's mailbag segment. The plan was to have the drawings, the detours drawings out in the mail for Life Day. There was much in the news about the US Postal Service getting slammed Christmas season. So my plan was to send them out the day after Christmas. And Watto has been dealing with some family drama. And by family drama, I of course mean Yoko. So I apologize, the drawings will go out this week. Watto is not as good at sending kind things out to people as people are at sending kind things to Watto. Now, I'll, Watto, yeah. I think this might be the right time to announce what the show in two weeks is. I do too, and I was ready for this. Now, now this is January 24th will be this show. January 24th. And I... Uh, as a little bit of background here, we're talking about our January marathon fundraisers. And George really wanted to do the Lucas Lynch fundraiser. That was kind of George's passion project. And Patrick was very, very personally invested in, I would say, both Studio 60 and Muppets tonight. I mean, we all like the Muppets. Yeah. But Studio 60 was really kind of your passion That's project. Well. Yeah. And you said, I think it might be Watto's time. What is a series that Watto really cares about that he would like to reunite the cast for? Something he could, a cause he could get behind 
a media franchise he could get behind, something that's personal and that would excite him, okay? And you threw it out to Watto and you said, pick, pick anything, mm-hmm. right? We were, we were going back and forth, spitballing all sorts of ideas. And, uh, excuse me, you guys were really saying, I want you to think long and hard and pick something that really means a lot to you. Mm-hmm. And so Watto is here, you, some of you might have already guessed it, but Watto is here to announce that, of course, we're doing a marathon of the Buddies films. I, of course, speak about the film franchise that is spun off from the Air Bud franchise, focused on Air Bud's puppies who all talk in this side franchise. Air Buddies, Spooky Buddies, Santa Buddies, Treasure Buddies, Space Buddies, Snow Buddies. Am I forgetting one or did I listen? Uh, there's one last one. Hang on, let me go in order by what we will be watching. We will be watching Air Buddies, Snow Buddies, Space Buddies, Santa Buddies, Spooky Buddies, Treasure Buddies, Super Buddies. Super Buddies is the one I forgot, the epic conclusion to the franchise. It's an Oops All Buddies <laughs> marathon, as James Thompson Montgomery <laughs> said. And uh, they're all available on either HBO Max or Disney Plus. They are all between those two services. They are all under 90 minutes long. Uh, some of them are barely over an hour. We will be yeah. watching them all. We will be raising money for the ASPCA. We will be reuniting the cast and crew of these films. And I want to make it very clear. Watto has never seen any of these films before. I have, also absolute, seen, I have also seen, never seen None them. of us have seen I've any of them. Seen. You said pick something you care about deeply. And Watto picked the Buddies franchise that he has never seen. Yeah. Um... The the only thing I I only know one thing other than what you've just said about the franchise. I am only aware of one uh, fact regarding this series. Yes. Uh, And again, I I don't know whether this is true or not, but this is what I've heard is that out of all uh, the buddies films, uh, there's no buddies like snow buddies. Nobody's I know. They're like yes, no, they're like nobodies I know. Everything about them is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. I mean, nowhere will you get that happy feel. When you are stealing that special plow. It's no plow. Is it what makes no plow. plow special. That's right. Now, no now can we say I, what I think has to be our big objective with the Buddies Marathon? That there's no people like snow people? Well, they're like snow people, I know. But, but they're on a serious note here. We yeah, have already, you know, we've already done the bet. Let Watto land this thing. We've already booked a lot of great guests. We have many more in the works. Uh, the Buddies franchise weirdly features a lot of legendary performers' final appearances. So there are many guests we cannot book, like Don Knotts and Tim Conway. But we're working to book as many of the people who are alive as possible. In that area, we are perhaps showing a little bit of prejudice. We are not trying to book dead people. But any living participant in the Buddies franchise, we are interested in. But there's a big one. As you said, Patrick, Space Buddies is the end of the franchise. Mm -hmm. But it's also the beginning of a different story. (laughs) Space Buddies, of course, being the first credited film appearance of Superstar Zendaya. It is her first movie. She goes from Space Buddies to Spider-Man Homecoming, (laughs) The Greatest Showman, Spider-Man Far From Home. I think she's been in like five movies total. Obviously has won an Emmy, has won a Kim's Choice Awards. One of the big, is Michi. Of course, she is Michi of right. Mm-hmm. Smartfoot, she is Michi. Mm-hmm. We need to get Zendaya on the George Lucas talk show. Now, now, I, now, Patrick is hiding his face because he's embarrassed because he's going, oh no, they're going to, everyone's going to be disappointed if we don't get Zendaya. Let's make it very clear. Patrick has put out the ass. We have, unsurprisingly, gotten no response. So I just want to say, this is an area in which viewers of the George Lucas talk show should maybe try to encourage Zendaya to help raise money for the ASPC. What better way to end the marathon than settling down for super buddies and Zendaya can explain well, I do want to be really clear. Good. I do want to be clear. I do think it's Zendaya. 
Zendaya is Michi. Zendaya is Michi. Zendaya, Zendaya is Michi. Zendaya is Michi. And LeBron Zendaya is Foggy. Danny Tito is Dorgal. Great. Okay. So it's Zendaya. I mean, I what do you want me to re say the entire spiel? People get. I mean, we have time. Go for it. Folks, is Patrick, Patrick already. We have, you have time, Patrick. Oh. Wow. Okay, George. Sorry. I didn't realize. Well, I, I realize uh, you, you're uh, jumping in in the cold open. You're. you're uh, maybe the power's getting to your head a little, Patrick. Zendaya plays Lollipop. The, the character's name is Lollipop. And it is truly, it was, you know, it was a straight to video movie, but Super Buddies is classified as her first film, period. Then they're not counting TV movies, they are counting direct to video films. So Zap doesn't count before you get in my mentions asking for Zap. It's a TV movie. So we go Super Buddies, then her second film ever, Spider-Man Homecoming, The Greatest Showman, Smallfoot, Spider-Man Far From Home, Malcolm and Marie, Dune, and then the currently filming third Spider-Man film. Patrick, did you bring up that quote, that comment? Are your feelings hurt, Patrick? I mean, they're not not. But you you know that you know that you know that I didn't want tonight's show to go too long, right? Yeah, I know. And Patrick, you know that for all that we joke about the barning and the bullying, joke. that you are a great friend and producer and booker. But sometimes you're faced with a guest who feels unbookable, a Zendaya, and we need to. We need to unify our community around the cause. I guess too big for any one man to book. We need all the Grogurus and Gragras to let it be known that Zendaya must appear on well, the George. Now, Wado, Wado, I do want to say, right and maybe this is talking uh, out of school, but uh, we didn't talk about this before. <laughs> right? We have not, this is you bringing this up. We have not discussed this until now. I have said to you, we should not, not try to book Zendaya. I did preemptively over text at one point say to you, I know it's a reach, yeah. but I don't think it is worth not even trying. But I do want to say now, now that I've said that and it's out in the open and the cat's out of the bag. Great bumper. Go on. Great bumper. I don't know if I was here when that bumper was set up, and I'm not sure what it's referring to. It's referring to when the cat is out of the bed. Okay. But Wait, Bryce and Pink Patrick, is did you just say the phrase, the cat's out of the bag, without knowing that there would be a bumper? Well, all right. So I, if you really want to know the deal, I'll be real with you. I yeah, Patrick, what's your fucking deal? I knew there was a bumper. I knew someone had to say it. Well, now that I've said that, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Bryson, get in here. Bryson. Let's bring Dave in too. Bryson, I want to make something clear. You've really redeemed yourself. You've done a great job. Oh, the new okay. mailbag bumper is exquisite. We're going yeah. to get so much good use out of that. Mm -hmm. Cat's out of the bag is a winner. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's a technical accomplishment, the likes of which we have rarely seen on this show. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it very cool. clear that the bumper I'm about to suggest is not meant to criticize you. It is meant to criticize Patrick. Mm -hmm. Twice tonight, Patrick has missed time the playing <laughs> of the bumper. He started playing them prematurely, then cut it off, then there's an awkward moment, and then he actually does play. Yeah. We need some sort of trigger happy pappy. <laughs> <laughs> P 
Pappy? Because Patsy has to call Mark Sugar Happy Pappy. I, I know Patty is cleaner in terms of it being his name, but Pappy is funnier in terms of it rhyming. Yeah. And I think yeah. comedy wins in this. Yeah. You got it. Do you do you have anything you'd like to see for visuals? I know that uh, you know we had some miscommunication in the past. Uh, Bryson, I can probably send you a picture. Great. You're telling bye, me. Bye, bye, Bryson. Well, hold on. Wait a second. We got to get Bryson and Dave back in. There. Don't back don't Bryson remove and Dave. Dave. With the bye bye I Bryson. Was, Bryson, that is I exactly what I was Bryson. about to say. We're all on the same page here. It is rude that you it's are lumping rude. Dave into the booting of Bryson. Dave is his own person. He's a great friend, the likes of which we rarely see on the level of LDP, Bobby, Sarah Nano Chenny. Famously, oh. your list of friends, though. I yeah. just added you. I just yeah. added you. Yeah. The list is an, it's an organic, ever-growing list. He doesn't even say Jeffrey anymore. He used to say Jeffrey all the time. It's implied. Because well, he's dead. My best friends aren't dead. He was my best friend. Past tense. Now I like Dave a little bit more than Jeffrey. <laughs> but Dave needs his own bye-bye bumper for when we're ready to boot. Wow. Lotto, do you want to sing something for it? Yes. What a Dave it's been. Can I, just off of the Dave, can we have you do as like in a Paul Schaefer voice? Just a bye bye Dave? Yeah. Okay. Ah, yes, that's right. Bye bye Dave. Are you happy with that, Watto? No, I kind of feel like I'm close, but I don't quite have it. Do you want to try with some skank? Yeah, let me. I, Dave, that's a great note. Let me try to put some skank. Oh, oh, Schaefer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And watching a lot of Letterman. Does Let's he say, see. sir? Like, doesn't he go like, yes, sir? Yeah, you're right about that. Like, when he's like agreeing with him, like, you guys. I don't know if I remember, sir. Wado, just do just do a couple of ahs to get warmed up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ed McMahon was the yes, sir. That's mm -hmm. right. I'm, I'm confusing all the sidekicks. My hero. My holy trinity. <laughs> Eubanks. McMahon. Shake. Bye, Dave. We need, I'm sorry, we need to get that clean. <laughs> oh, people are saying Paul dropped the good babe. Ah, bye, Dave. Babe. Can you do that but make an OJ joke? Or uh, something ending with crack whore? What? You sound like Norm. You sound like Norm McDonald. But your references are meddled. You just made one was a Norm joke and one was a Dennis Miller joke. Dennis Miller <laughs> says, babe. Okay, ready? It's a tall ass, but I can do it because I'm a pro. Are, you, are we all ready? Mm -hmm. Let me just plug my computer in because it, I just found that a little bad. Okay, ready? And bye bye, Dave. You guessed it. Frank Stallone, babe. <laughs> we want one more of that. Just yeah. one more for fun. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to really put some stank on this. And bye bye, Dave. You guessed it. Frank Stallone, babe. I think that's the one. I can clean up whoever chuckled at the end. I'm professional. That was a lot of things in there. Just wedged. It's tough to fit it all in, but you did it. And we should make it clear that visually the bumper should feature Schaefer, Miller, and McDonald all waving goodbye today. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Am I the only one that doesn't understand Frank Stallone being involved here? It's a norm go-to. Okay. It's a norm go-to. Any right. sort of topical joke about like a news story where there was an unidentified person and he would say like, you know, a, a, a man in Florida this week, then this, whatever. The man, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. Yeah. I've also been watching a lot of Norm clips. I truly, I've been watching so much Norm and so much Letterman. The fact that I am nowhere close to having a Norm or a Paul <laughs> is pretty disconcerting to me. Hmm. I would say it's downright tragic. We began this evening with the story of the tragedy of Cobra Kai and the Star Wars sequels being disappointing to uh, to the level of tragedy, according to one reporter. And now we have we are we are reaching the end of a second uh, of uh, of an end of the show with another tragedy that, despite watching many hours of these shows. You feel as if you've made little progress, progress, progress. Is it Water. Just, does it feel like this isn't the after show? It does feel something that has changed. I just feel, feels like that it's more, um, what do you call it? Should I howl too? Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.